I hit. Somebody has to cut drywall. Uh, cutting drywall. Somebody. Sounds like an exciting thing to do. We are live. Um, thank you for being here with us. Oh, John, maybe now you've got... The, I'm wondering if there's the, the, the background blur setting on your Skype, perhaps. It's very blurry at the moment. But everybody, welcome. So nice to have you here for episode 29 of Drawn Together. And we're joined today by John Ofori. Um, <laughs> we're, we're just uh, <laughs> figuring things out. We just had um, figuring out some sound issues and overheating phones and um, all these fun things. We, we get to learn so much about the possibilities and limitations of our techno technology here. Um, and shoes. And <laughs> it's great to, to hear what shoes everyone's wearing in the chat. <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's so nice. Thank you for joining us here, John. It's uh, super cool to be able to sit here and be with you. Um, I'm going to... It's, it's a bit different today. Rather than drawing John, John has selected some reference for us, which I'm really excited about because um, John works from such amazing reference and creates such compelling, amazing images. So here are three Earth's World references that we have. We were chatting about Earth's World a couple of live streams ago um, and fo to be followed up by Yul Brunner as Ramses from the Ten Commandments. So those are our reference images for today. And if you'd like to grab those, um, hopefully you just took screenshots <laughs> or you can follow the link in the description on YouTube and um, you can download them to, to draw along as we're working. Um, and now I'm gonna um, just look through some work of, of John's and we can just kind of have a, a chat about it. Um, yeah, and it's, it's been really interesting. Um, I can't figure out exactly when I first became aware of you, but I, I know the moment. I know Scott Fisher mentioned that your work was amazing. And then um, I checked you out and that was, that was a few years back now. So we're going on a bit of a, a time traveling um, journey through your work here. And I've just brought up two images of this bearded man with a coat and a hat. And one of your earliest posts was from the same reference. And one you posted a few days ago, it looks like the same or very similar reference that you've worked from for this image. And it was so interesting to see that um, about nine or 10 years later um, that you've done another version from the same reference. Um, very cool. Dylan, there's only one reference in the Dropbox. Really? All right. Well, okay, well, I'll bring the references back up, grab screenshots. And once I've um, done the intro, I will put the files in, okay. in the Dropbox. I thought I put them all there. Um, oh, maybe I only link to one instead of the whole folder. Um, so those are the references. And this ink painting makes me want to paint. This is the one I shared yesterday. Yeah, it's so nice. And, um, yeah, and there's some pretty early ones. Uh, and I, I'll just mention what's there. And if you want to weigh in on anything, if you can remember, if you have a vision of what I'm talking about, John, feel free. Because we'd, um, yeah, just, just, just love to hear from you. Um, but that there's one you've drawn on uh, Ralph Lauren paper. Um, uh, it's really, which he said was a, a work sketch, was pretty cool. Um, and uh, a sculpture figure here. I have quite a few images here, so I'm just going to flick through them because I couldn't, I found it really hard to narrow it down because there's just um, so many wonderful, compelling portraits. And um, yeah, for a long time, I've been really inspired by your, your use of um, color pencil and um, there's such a yeah a lovely quality to your images and there's some um, a sense of uh, realness but exaggeration um, which is just yeah so so enjoyable to watch <laughs> and and see how you work 
And so we're kind of uh, looking through these images. We're traveling through time. Here are some skull studies. Um, and the, I think it looked like this was about like um, 10 years worth of, of work, uh, a brief selection here that we're um, flying through. And definitely go check out John's Instagram account. All of our links uh, to Instagram are in the description. Um, J Ofori on Instagram. Um, yeah, and it's really interesting looking his, um, on the left here, we have a, a military figure and it's interesting noticing a recurrence of military reference. Um, yeah, for a long time, I've, I've really been uh, inspired and intrigued by your, your choice of reference and the way you, you represent things. It's uh, really cool. <laughs> And as I was going through these, I just. Oh, we don't have. Um, John's oh, John. John's muted something. at the moment. Ah. Yes, can, can you hear, hear me now? now? Yeah. Yay! Okay. Okay, how about now? Well, now we've got the. That works? There's a, a bit of feedback there. So maybe. Mute the other feed. I try that. Yeah. That work? Yeah. That's nice and clear. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah. So a lot of those were from hundred eggs. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Like a bulk of them. Um, and usually I just try to find really good structured photos, good value structure, clear mm -hmm. shapes, things like that. And when did you first start the 100 heads challenge? And have you done a couple of rounds by now? Uh, we've done mm -hmm. two. Uh, me and my buddy, Joe Martin, yeah. I did college with. Uh, um, and we started that at least Mm -hmm. Four, five years ago? I'd say at least five. Yeah. And those are, uh, those are trials. Mm -hmm. The the 100 head challenge is a trial, like to get through. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Um, Every day, like, it just played Power Hour. No, it's I haven't. A drinking game. Power Hour? <laughs> you take a shot oh. every minute for an hour. Okay. And so at first it's very easy and but about half hour in it starts coming up way quicker. Yeah. Way, way quicker. So you're just taking shots, trying to recover, mm -hmm. taking shot. So 100 heads is like the same thing where it's you'll spend a couple hours on something and then the next day you're like you're still trying to recover from the the three drums that you didn't that yeah. didn't work <laughs> the day before and you spend like 10 hours on a drawing, and then you have to start yeah. again, and yeah. again, like 100 days. So it's, some days are easy, some, most are a mm -hmm. struggle. And you have to like, just kind of be okay with whatever the, the outcome. Yeah. yeah, it's, um. I also heard recently uh -huh. from a few other people, some of the, um, the original Kano um, crew met each other through a 100 head challenge. And um, yeah, and that was interesting to hear about that because it's it's intense. I've done some 30 faces, 30 days things, but um, to really make that commitment to doing a portrait every day. Um, and yeah, just the, can, can just see the, the time, the quality, um, like you, you haven't just, uh, um, what am I trying to say? They're, they're not just brief sketches. They, um, looks like you put a lot of work into your... Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I'm slow and I kind of like to bounce around mm -hmm. to different joints. So some will sit there for like a day or two or some a year <laughs> until I get back to it. Yeah, wow. Yeah. And uh, Shannon and I were kind of talking about art hoarding and I have a lot of sketchbooks so I forget there's some drawings in some sketchbooks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I noticed. And I'll go back and, oh yeah, I gotta finish yeah. this. 
yeah, some of your um, so I've just got to image up at the moment. They are part of the same spread on a, in a sketchbook, and um, yeah, the uh, the sketchbook pages I've seen on your Instagram they they look really amazing. Um, do do you have like a a regular or disciplined kind of sketchbook practice at the moment? Uh, well, it's every day. I try to yeah. Uh, yeah. Draw slowly. I'm starting something new and refining something that's already there. Mm -hmm. So my the thing I'm starting new. That's usually the warm up. I'm doing some shapes and things like that, and then I'll figure out what I want to draw. Yeah, and then then I will probably finish what I was working on previously, and then continue. I'll probably work on like two or three things. Yeah, at the time. cool. Yeah, and I noticed in that uh, it looks like in the sketchbook practice where you've often got shapes like it um it really can like see the the kind of the constant study and kind of process of learning and it just looks really cool together um and it it, it flows into a, a really interesting compositional element when you've just got these kind of three-dimensional forms floating next to the portrait and um yeah it's, uh, it's really um, inspiring to observe the, the practice that you have. All right, jo John's, John's muted you again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can hear you now. <laughs> We're going to... I was getting like, so a static, like a static, like a static Okay, sound. we'll start drawing now, by the way. And we've got four, we've got, oh, we've got yeah. four references. And now we're just going to chat and, and draw. And um, if you have any questions just in the in the chat, oh, I will do what I said I would do and make sure that the link with all of the references is up. Um, yeah, and okay, we'll talk about artwork. Talk about artwork. Um, yeah, the the beardless Earth's world. So um, something definitely I want to uh, talk about is um, I think. When I first became aware, aware of Earth's World images was from a post that you had shared uh, years back, I think, um, as a, an interesting source of reference and inspiration. Um, yeah, stumbled upon Earth's World's uh, account. He's very cool. He lets people use his reference, use his pictures for reference, and just tag them in it, basically. Yeah. It takes phenomenal photos. Yeah, it's, it's very cool. Um, all right. Hoping I'm getting the right link here. Could someone let me know in the chat if you have access to all of the images yet, or just one? <laughs> so, do you two find this difficult to conversate and deal with? You know? To converse. It's a challenge, <laughs> uh, but I think it's a learnable skill. Dylan's a lot better at it. Yeah. I, think I, I used to. Were you about to say something? Oh, I was. When sometimes when you talk, Donna, it's accompanied by a little static that I can't. Sometimes hear through, but it's, it's not me being um, a bad cool. conversation. Let's build trying to do, but it's part of it. I was gonna say I used to be able to not do it at all ever, and if you watch the the early drawing together,s it's a little more apparent. Or like I, I'll do what I just do it did, and I get like fixated on one little thing while I'm trying to figure out. Like the next word I'm gonna say, like, and then I realize I've been drawing this dude's ear for like five seconds. Well, I know some of the uh, One of you will talk, and the other will draw. draw. Trying to like, I'm just kind of like uh, zone in, and then just switch off. I don't know if you're doing that consciously or not, but I was like, that's yeah. It's um, there are these moments. I do. It yeah. I was like, oh, Shannon's talking now. I can kind of like concentrate a bit more because I, I definitely have in um, 
I've had live streams where I'm getting really into the topic of conversation. At some point, I look at my drawing and I'm like, oh, what am I doing? And um, so it's nice, nice to be doing this together and be able to kind of check in and um, the be an interesting rhythm to to the way we we draw together and talk. Cool. Thank you, Eddie One Tizzle, for letting me know the drawings are up. That's great. Um, we also I rely on the audience to talk to us. Yeah. Too. Yeah, it's great to have um, everyone here. Thank you for joining us, beloved audience. Um, beloved audience, we can't do this without. So, what made you start this? Would you like to answer, Shannon? <laughs> Yes, still because Dylan always says he always says a serious thing. He always says Shannon had this idea. Shannon had this idea, and in all my life, I've had all kinds of mixed up ideas before, and then I had a good idea, and then I do it with Dylan, who never lets anybody forget it's my idea. But Dylan does all the work. <laughs> oh, I mean, you can be the idea person. Dylan does Come all on. the work. Yeah, exactly. Ideas are so hard. <laughs> yeah, I had. Um... But keep going, Shannon. You have more. Now you. Okay. I have to okay. Draw, so you have um, to talk. I I had done a bunch <laughs> of live streams um, in 2020 um, for mm -hmm. for Sketchy. I don't know if you're familiar with them, but they they organise um, 30 faces, 30 days challenges and. I was invited to to teach in some of those, and and then I I had my own class with them, um, which I taught and did live streaming as part of it, and it was um, it's something some some friends of mine were like oh you could do live streaming, um, and they told me about like Argentinian farmer who like drives around in his tractor with like cameras and he's live streaming just like plowing the fields and stuff. And like you can, you can live stream with anything you could totally live stream your drawing process and um Absolutely. yeah and <laughs> and so i had yeah in 2020 i i did it i think for half a year it was almost weekly with sketchy and then i didn't do it for a while and um uh, nicolas oribe's live streams totally like inspired me i thought it was so cool um that he was you know just doing it out there like every day pretty much drawing yeah. and um yeah and then when shannon so i had been have you ever i was in Spain. if he's ever left if, have you tried it have you been i haven't seen any i haven't seen any reels like but have i are there live have no, you tried no, no, it? Doing it now. i mean you saw you saw me trying to set up today <laughs> um, I'm trying to get better at it. Uh, you guys are helping. Cool. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. If... But I'm, so far, I'm just like recording things and I'll post it later. Mm -hmm. If you if you ever have any questions or anything, or. Yeah, it's totally like, there's, there's so much learning, so, so much along the way to like figure things out and. Um, you know, there's, there's like kind of there's constantly so many things you could do <laughs> and um the, the choice to be like okay how do we figure out what's how do we do this stuff and um yeah whenever if if, if you or anyone watching ever has any questions about like doing this stuff then feel free to ask um because it's yeah we've kind of um dived into this practice and learned a lot of stuff along the way and um yeah and the whole what what makes it so cool is just like hanging out and chatting with um with friends and it's just such a nice way to create together and um get to hang out and talk to awesome people and for the people watching when we see uh the work that people are doing as they're drawing along that's uh that's it's really wonderful And you get random scary sounds. Oh, 
Altså, hvis han sådan er... Jeg Gemini, I have questions about live streaming. I don't bother you about live streaming. I'm like, gosh, I, I wish I could figure this out. I, I can't bother with Dylan about this now. Sure, go for it. <laughs> bother me. Try. Try and bother me. <laughs> no, I can't. I can't okay. think of any. We can both learn at the same time if you just... Uh, yeah. I think the secret is just to do it. Like, you just gotta do it. And then you have to be strong enough to, like, keep doing it when nobody comes to my live streams. Which time I'm not strong enough to keep uh. doing it. it. Turns out. Like, if I do a live stream and then I just get, like, overwhelmed with the realization that I'm here and, like, I don't know if it... Oh! And, like, my YouTube channel is, like, fizzled out. I had, like, a radio moment on the YouTube channel, but now I have to draw again because now it's, like... Anyway. But you want to do it live it's or you want to do the voiceover over video you've already kind of shot? That I can do if I apply myself. Shannon's really good at editing. Like, I mean, but it's a very time consuming <laughs> process. It yeah. takes so long. Yeah, everything I like to do takes forever. <laughs> Those good things do. It's. How long will you spend on a drawing, John? You said that you were slow and you like to take your time. Uh, yeah, so it depends on how quickly I get uh, my goal. So form, depth, good shape design. Um, so I'll leave something not done. But it's done to me because it, it checked off all the boxes. I like the image, um, and adding anything else, kind of just when the drawing peaks, mm -hmm. it'll start going down the other end. So at that point, I'm just adding stuff that doesn't really need to be there. The statement is made, so I don't need to just pound it into the viewer's face, basically. Yeah, it makes sense. Wow. Totally identify with that. Do you guys hear an echo on my phone? No. It's uh, trying to re restrain yourself from just going overboard with everything. Do you draw other people like by request, or like have you drawn somebody else and then they're like, "Oh, when are you going to finish it?" I mean, usually if it's like commission stuff, that's like, um, that's easier to get through. Just because I, I have an end date and I know it needs to be done by this. So I'll just speed up the process, basically. And I usually have to work on a couple things at once just so I'm not hyper focused on the one thing where you you can't see the mistakes anymore. So I have to like work on two or three things. I bounce around and my brain can reset for each thing I'm mm -hmm. working on. Which I can get things done faster that way. Um, I think a lot of this was yeah. like that. Cool. Thank you, Paul. Nice to have you here, Paul. Nice to have everyone here. But um, yeah, it's an interesting observation that Paul just said. It's great to see how different you three drew. Um, and to talk mm -hmm. about working on different things at the same time, um, I I was looking around, uh, googling you, <laughs> and. Um, I found something that looked like it was a bit of an outdated website, but it said about you working in illustration and graphic design. And there was that uh, uh, Ralph Laurent um, image. Is you you worked for them as in graphic design, or what? What did you do? What are you doing at the moment? <laughs> so I I studied abroad there at Pont Aven, uh, junior year undergrad, and then I begged them to be the intern. Mm -hmm. So I went back as an intern after I graduated. I was there for about a year, year and a half almost. And then I started recruiting for them. And I did all the uh, promotional materials. So I was a graphic designer. I was a recruiter. I was, I was whatever I could do to stay with them and stay in France as long as I could. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. 
here in New York now? I am in New York. In Brooklyn. Yeah. Brooklyn. And Shannon, where are you? I'm in Bloomington, Indiana. Yeah. yeah. It's um it's really Indiana y here. <laughs> I, I was wondering the same thing. It means there's helicopters spraying shit on the corn. That's what it means, I think. And that, that was more like a last month thing. No, I haven't been outside in a while. The camera that shows John. It may be because it's yellow. Bright. Yellow is just so light. It's yellow, yeah. I'm gonna, yeah, it's yellow. I'm going to get dark in a second. I usually start yeah. light. Yeah. To get the shit. And um, everyone can share yeah. their work after this. Um, if you're posting on Instagram, you can use the hashtag drawn together and then you'll be able to see what work people have been doing. And I'll be sharing, we, Shannon and I will share stuff to our stories. And um, and you can also tag Earth's World as well um, for these uh, cool Earth's World references. Sharing is but yeah, I, I also noticed that it was pretty bright, but it's because yellow, yellow is like, um, I recently made a video about um, color as value. And when you start with yellow, it's like a, it's nice to fill a space with yellow and then you can, it's in the, in the range of values, it's, it's the brightest color you can get basically. I was liking how in some of your drawings, John, you have like, it's all, all the same color, but there's like two pencils and like one will be like slightly off hue to the other one. Or is it just my eyes? Because you had like a red and then there was like a reddish orange, like a really warm orange with a really warm red and a sneak. It made it look like they were like full color, even though they were just one color. Yeah, I'm trying to, I try to stretch the color just as far as I can go. My ultimate goal is uh, yeah. good value. And I'm usually just grabbing, I'm just grabbing pencils from a stack of pencils. Okay, cool. That's it. Just grab what's there. So like it'll be some yellows or, or I'm just looking to create a good value structure mostly. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the reds, it'll, it'll be done at about a value seven or eight. So I need something that's a little darker. Mm -hmm. I'll get like a purpley or a blue and I'll get a darker with that. It's not a, it's not a uh, thought out color process at all. So it's Sometimes. Yeah, that's um, the, the color is uh, something really um, kind of ca captivating in your work. Uh, it's really nice that that um, limited color range, but yeah, really um, wonderful value control is uh, really nice and evident in your work. Pao, I think once once there's more darker values in the drawing, perhaps that will be easy to see. But yeah, the drawing feed seems a bit low res compared to the rest. But perhaps once, because I noticed what, when the image is not moving so much, it was a bit clearer to see. So things will change. And um, because we've got a bunch of references to work from, um, I figured in the past, we've done like 20 minute warm up drawings, and then kind of move along. And you can all choose to go your own pace. Um, I, I'm feeling like I'm, I'm probably going to move on to the next one now. And there's still a lot of potential in this, so maybe I'll come back to it. But um, yeah, we can just kind of you could stick out the whole session with one reference, or you can dance around and draw whatever you want. <laughs> Which one are you doing for the um, I think we have the, the woman up next for the next one. So. Yeah. I was just getting really involved in that guy's parodic. Yeah, keep, keep getting involved. Go for it, go for it. Yeah, but, um, I want to paint the lady. I want to do my lady. You, you want to move on? And maybe move back. <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah, we can just yeah. we can just move around. And if you if you're watching and yeah. and you look up at some point and notice oh they're drawing something different, you can just kind of um, jump around and draw what you draw what you like. Spend as long time as long or as 
go go as fast as you like. I really like her. I I feel like I know what she's thinking. Yeah. I feel like I've thought the same thing. Yeah, it's like a it's like a a real um, tired disapproval <laughs> of whatever she's. Doing. And I too have had it up to here. <laughs> um. Yeah, I'm I'm. It's always interesting to see what um, like what reference people work from, and there are some like really incredible uh, resources for references of faces. And um, I have a, a lot of friends who have done a lot of Earth's World drawings, and there's something we talked about uh, on on a couple of live streams, and um, it's really interesting. It seems like a it's a because they're not current they're not current yeah it's like from from yeah. last year sometime he's publishing photos from country fairs um i thought they were like um older like film photos from a while back i don't know how oh yeah i'm talking about earth's world but you mean um john's references yeah there's a lot of yeah. uh, like historical figures and um the military stuff's really interesting I'm You do mean Earth's World? Yeah, good, uh, good reference. You see a lot of like older pictures, yeah. black and white photos. Really cool. Yeah, John, how do you get drawn to the um, to the military pictures? Is it the quality of the studio lighting that they're being photographed in? Or is it more? Usually in. You have larger just lots and shapes in there. So like the uniforms can be one color, metals are another color and shape. The head. So it's everything's kind of just separated really nicely. And if you can stay uh, disciplined. That's why I like keeping your shapes separated and your values where they should be. You can come up with a nice image for your brain to do. I love that time with Malcolm X too. He has like this really like like the iconic glasses and like the he is like he looks like he's in a military photo as a stature. Yeah. Oh, just the. Um. So handsome. Yeah, I'll bring that one up again. Uh, no, that's I've got two of them. Okay. Got James Baldwin and Martin Luther King, and then. Here we go, Martin Luther King and Malcolm X. Yeah, that such a nice crop. Just a little bit of the the collar of the jacket, and that was something um, okay. when you did the um, Black History Month series. Uh, that that was really cool. I I think when. When you do that, and I saw there were a couple of other artists in um, 21 doing Black History Month portraits. I also um, did some Black History Month portraits. And the thing of like choosing historical figures and really um, using it as, a, as an opportunity to um, get acquainted with people's stories and work and what they, what they have done um, to get acquainted or to, to deepen the understanding of, of what they did um it's a it's a really uh a, a powerful thing to do i think and i remember seeing your your work back then and i can't remember who else i saw was also doing it. there was like a series of um really uh awesome informative it was just like a a great opportunity to to dive into uh black history and and that was um it was really interesting yeah. For me, um, being from Australia and living in Germany, and um, it's interesting because whatever happens in the States uh, has had and continues to have such um, uh, like it it affects so much in the world and particularly in like popular and Western culture and. Um, mm -hmm. And so those for better or for worse. What's that? 
for, for, for better, better for better or worse exactly worse. exactly yeah and um and in that month i also uh yeah i got to learn more about the the african diaspora in germany where i'm living and um and until that point i wasn't really uh very aware of the colonial past of germany and um and of like afro-german culture and that was a, a really interesting opportunity to like to to learn and kind of dive into um some really you know I important and powerful um recent history and also contemporary stuff that's going on as well yeah it's uh for me it was always a good either refresher course or it was me mm -hmm. learning things too doing a deep dive because some history stuff is a little too uh, a little too uh -huh. colorful at times so I have to take yeah, yeah. small doses yeah. uh, I'm very reactive to stuff like that but it's a good way for me to find positive things in history and maybe that it's not been covered and I try to stay away from mm -hmm. um, and kind of look more towards people that were helping out or, or maybe it's women or men that have been forgotten by history. Yeah. Yeah. Like Some the of those people do this. That, or, so it's, it's just a way for me to know what's going on or what was covered up mm -hmm. back in the day. Yeah. Yeah, and that's been. I like that because we draw to like not hurt and yeah. yeah. Like I know when you say colorful, you mean absolutely traumatic and horribly painful. <laughs> yeah. Right? yeah. Same. I don't want to say that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, and that's um. It's that I feel like that's really interesting in i don't know if it's now more so than ever in my life just the last few years it's just like uh constantly intense and it, it's also it keeps on the like, harking back to a lot of historical stuff and a lot of contemporary stuff that's happening and um and i'm often wondering like what can we do with our you know to to educate and inform ourselves and then potentially others and um and just to keep learning and um, yeah, and I, I really love some of the the sports stars. Um, like when you just share, share like one sentence about their history, like um, this guy, this guy who'd mm -hmm. uh, hit more ho home runs than Babe Ruth. <laughs> um, oh, uh, where was it? I've got. I had a drawing up. Huh. I'm not a pencil dude. Oh, I, really I, I didn't catch everyone's um, names, but that was so interesting when, um, cause I, and even now it's like, I know the name Babe Ruth, even though I know very little about baseball. <laughs> um, and then right now in this moment being like, that was so interesting and being like, oh, what's the guy's name again? Um, and then maybe I have another version of the image in the back. The United States had like a whole separate um, league. Hank. Like baseball. Right? Hank Aaron. Yeah. Oh yeah, Hank Aaron. Hank Aaron. Yeah, they had Negro League. They had them separated for a while. Yeah. My dad was a huge baseball fan. Not huge, but he really liked baseball. He really All my knowledge. Comes from my daddy. But I can't get into it. I've always wanted to get into it, but I, I can never get into it. As a spectator? I don't it's understand. It's like a slow sport. <laughs> what about like ERA? Have stuff. you ever watched cricket? Oh my goodness, no. <laughs> That's a whole That's a slow thing. sport. That's a like, whole different The, the games game. go... It isn't even a ball game. I don't know what's going exactly, yeah. on for days. <laughs> there could be no winner. Yeah. I, I'm... 
aware of it and have been around it but um it also didn't really captivate me but yeah days can they can go up for three days uh, a cricket match i mean that's big is, in australia yeah and do they get just yeah yeah they get to sleep they also get to stand around a lot it's <laughs> <laughs> three days no sleep it just it, it keeps getting weirder I mean, that would be, as the game progresses that'd be better. yeah yeah <laughs> It's kind of like a, um, oh it's like a big social event. Like people will buy tickets to the games and they just go hang out with their friends for days, <laughs> watching people standing around for most of the time. The festivals. Yeah. yeah. Good way to get camping. Cricket is painful, <laughs> says. <laughs> it sounds painful. Um, yeah, and you, you also, you shared this little uh, thing about Kareem Abdul-Jabbar that they changed the rules of the game because he was just too good <laughs> um, and it was really? yeah there was I, I I have a few things in the in the background where was it um, I don't know if I saved the text of the post but when he was in the in the college like college league they had to he was just so much better than everyone else that they had to adapt the rules. Um, oh, are we talking? Yeah, about yeah, basketball? different game now. That's still was exciting though. Basketball was like, oh my god, these two are. It was pretty good. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was, sure. it was. Superhuman. Yeah, and that's just, it's just something, um, like in the the act of drawing like just choosing someone who's done something, you know, interesting. And also just, um, you know, like everyday heroes as well. Um, and like choosing to focus our attention just just on that person's face for for an hour um, and that, or to you know, like dive into their story or listen to audiobooks and stuff about some history about these people as we we draw them. Um, I, I, it's just such a uh, like enriching, rewarding experience. So with your um, and you also mentioned for this session about um, perhaps drawing a historical figure, and um, I think it's a really a nice um, a nice way to choose. I went uh, I went fake historical with Ramses and Neil Brennan. Mm-hmm. Double history. Yeah. Yeah, that's um. So I've I've got got that as our last reference, and we're just going to keep drawing and chatting. <laughs> so we'll work, work our way through these things. I've never seen the Ten Commandments. I've, I've seen Moses, Prince of Egypt. You haven't seen the Ten Commandments? No, I've never have. I mean, I've read the Ten Commandments. Oh yeah, I mean, it's not a like amazingly acted film, but the sets, the uh, costumes, looking fun. Yeah. yeah. I think I saw some of it. They didn't have a lot of cameras yeah. to go by. Yeah, I think I saw some of it like when I was a kid. Like I remember um like some of the scenes and just kind of the the kind of scale, the the sense of drama of it. I th it's interesting, just think about it now. I think biblical movies. I think it was at my grandparents' place, who are not Christian. Um maybe it was just on and um yeah and that was a blockbuster back in the day like ben her but, yeah that is a hard one to get through i gotta say try it twice it's making me want to try give it a shot i mean to me it wasn't as beautiful as Commandments or anything like that, but it's cool. 
I love a good Bible movie. <laughs> I really do. I'm not just saying that. Passion of the Christ? Oh, yeah. Jim Caviezel? Oh, uh, yeah, I saw that in the yeah, theater. Yeah, <laughs> Everybody in the theater for Passion of the Christ, they're like, yes, we're here to see Passion of the Christ. We're so excited, we're so happy. And then they left and they're like this. <laughs> it was brutal. It was, yeah, it was hard. I was like, what do you expect? Yeah, um, I saw it in theaters too. It was, that is not what I expected to see. It was harsh. And then you have people waiting outside the theater. Like either trying to convert you or something. Yeah. It, was, it was an odd experience. Yeah, it was. It was a real evangelical event. For real. I got. Cool. Um, wow. And I haven't seen it again since yeah. then. Now we need something. to see it. <laughs> <laughs> um, Paul has just said, and I know Paul yeah. is a uh, a big fan because Paul wrote and was very excited that you're joining us today. Um, and Paul just said, I don't know about John's way of becoming an artist, his education, or even exactly what his job is now. <laughs> um, do you want to fill us in? Yeah, give us a little rundown it. on uh, the story of John. <laughs> so all the illustration, um, for your degree, and it's basically a wide open degree. You can do a lot of stuff with it. And I tried doing a lot of stuff with it. Uh, fashion, animation, advertising, film, storyboards, uh, murals, artist assistants. We basically paint other people's paintings for them. Um, freelance, so doing odd little art jobs here and there, portrait commissions. And I think the, the way I like to do it is for the last five or six years, I'll sell some of the things I do, but it's mostly for me to get better. I've been trying to focus on getting better and getting to my idea, what I'm picturing in my head as far as like what I want to see finish with something. So I've been working harder on that. And now I'm a little bit more in like a better place, I guess, to take on commissions and take on portrait stuff that mm -hmm. I, I want to do. Um, but I don't like to, that kind of zaps all of the uh, fun and wonderment out of it for me. And what is your um, so what is your main uh, your main gig at the moment? Your livelihood. Main gig right now. I usually work in restaurants. Okay. And I'm trying to either do that part time now, and then kind of do more painting, freelance, do the fashion work. Uh, but I, I like I like the service industry. Mm -hmm. So it's not, you don't have to work like full-time hours, but you get paid really yeah. well. The potential to be paid really well. I miss that so bad. Because you're giving people <laughs> food. I love that. Food and drink. Food and drink. It's set up in your favor. Yeah. You're f fulfilling these fundamental needs that people have. So. Yep. Good feeling. So I like how you overwrap your uh, drawings. Oh, thank you. I'm trying to draw like straight up, like, cause I'm always drawing like, like on the flat on the table for these, and this is a. Okay. This, I set my camera different. Angled. Yeah, I was gonna start my new sketchbook today <laughs> that I told you about that we talked about. Yeah. Indoor outdoor. It's an indoor sketchbook. <laughs> Thank you for remembering. I mean, I'm, Did you get yourself an outside I inside sketchbook? Need, I have sketchbooks I haven't even opened yet. I don't need any more paper. That's a good feeling. It's no, it's not because it's 
I want more because I'm a hoarder. They're waiting for you, John. Oh, they're out. They want you to pick them, the little plastic wrappers. I want you to peel them. I have two that are in a wrapper still right now. <laughs> 200. Not two. <laughs> oh, they said 200. 200? No. Two lying. does not constitute a hoarding situation. No, two so the hoarding is in your heart. I have at least 15 that are done. Yeah. <laughs> do you have um? Do you have like a favorite paper? Uh, now it's watercolor paper. Mm -hmm. So this is on a watercolor. Hold that up. This is on a watercolor block. Could could you? So this I can. Could, could you hold the drawing you're doing right now a bit, a bit closer to the the camera? Um. Yeah, it's a bit, it's a bit pixely, but maybe I thought if I get a bit closer and hold it still for a moment, yeah, like that, if it will kind of shift into focus, it's pretty cool. So the watercolor paper has like a bit of. It's pixely, like usually. A bit of um. I mean, this is hot press, so it's a little little textures, but it's smooth. Yeah. Yeah. Press mm -hmm. yeah. So with this one, I don't have to just leave this as a drawing. So if I ever want to paint something or paint a background in there, or it just gives me free reign to do whatever I want. Yeah. So I just like more options. Cool. So the work color paper gives me many options. I might have to get um. I have to look in the center that inside, not inside. I mean, you should have one for each, right? <laughs> I mean, I'm just happy I have an outside and an inside. But if I leave it inside, it might get wet from the leaking pipe. <laughs> Good luck um, getting that sorted, Shannon. <laughs> <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> what constitutes it being a outside as opposed to a inside sketchbook? I'll tell you. So, like, if it goes outside, then I'm going to be, be, like, outside, and I'm going to, I'm going to, like, so how much do you want to know? I'll tell you everything. Like, my iPad, I never brought it outside. And. Or well, fear of the user um, Apple yeah. Pencil and all that stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's like, it was, my iPad was born in 2016, and I think it's at the end of its lifespan, much like my phone <laughs> in my house right now. It's just all tied together with plumbing, basically. Like, we can look at this situation and just relate it to the flow of water through the modern <laughs> home. And you guys. It's very abstract. But if I take the books outside, they, they be, it's, they're just outside books. I can't, I can't bring an outside book into the inside. Are they stored outside? Like, Bed. what are you talking about? Yeah. I got the whole, it's a whole thing. I'm just trying to. I don't know how to begin. There's no, there's no starting point for the books story. that stay, that are used outside stay outside. Books that are used outside <laughs> stay outside. Thank you. Concision <laughs> is important. Um, Paul just asked if you could hold your drawings up to your face camera, because that looks like maybe yeah the the laptop camera is maybe a bit better than the tablet. Let's see. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's so, so big. big. So big. Oh, yeah, cool. Oh, she has a halo like oh, she deserves. Nice. I'm putting her in a little uh, space. I'm containing her a little bit so I can maybe put background in there. Yeah, cool. I love that. <laughs> so. Yeah, a lot of these drones, they don't really... Yeah, we need to dedicate... Like Sorry, that. Not you. I was just gonna say a lot of these these don't come together to like the last mm -hmm. minute when I like press the values in there towards the end. I'm sure. 
it, even just that little bit of orange in the like the eye socket like how you just got started but just that shape um n nestled in there it's uh, really nice i'm not to go back to him right now So in the um, in the reels, the videos that you did post recently, you're you're painting this um, like anatomical um, painting, like muscle. Um, or am I just imagining that it was like blue and red? Is it maybe the piece behind you on the wall? No, it's, it's, that's a melon. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but I have. Like, uh... <laughs> Thank you, Shar. I was just thinking about Shar because I was drawing the mustache and Shar said that oh, yeah. she gives a new painting to the mustache, out. but there's so many. Cool. Wow. <laughs> so big. Holy cow, John. <laughs> it's probably gonna fall. Yeah. We just don't really get an idea of the size, you know? Yeah, I was just thinking, I hope it doesn't, so, hope, yeah, so it, hope it doesn't fall down. <laughs> I've been trying to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah, and bigger. cool. That's the plan. Do you have any advice for me for that, to get bigger? Uh, just start getting bigger. So just do you, you want to paint or draw bigger? I want to do both bigger, but whenever I start, I just shrink it anyway. And then I'm like, yeah, fuck this, I'm just going <laughs> to little. I mean, it's taken a couple of years to, like, gradually get bigger and bigger and bigger. Uh, I'm sure there's a faster way to do it. But I was just trying to keep the skills I had small to get bigger naturally without, like, transferring anything or anything like that. But I'm going to see able to draw bigger, paint bigger. Um... Just, I, I focus on shapes. Mm -hmm. So pick out whatever shape that head is going to be or that figure or that landscape or whatever you're going to do and just blow it up. Make it huge on a huge surface and then attack it. What I'm hearing is that I'm thinking about it too much and I need to go for it. I mean, this is low, low risk. Uh, yeah, you're right. How we We all do. We all forget it. We're not <laughs> babies. Is it funny? That's like what we're telling people all the time, and then I just walk right into it. I'm like, how do I do this? Yeah. But now it's low risk. Yeah, thank you. Let us not forget. Um, I think uh, you're okay with just drawing all this stuff, or just your drawings just not looking good. If you're okay with that, and you can push through that, then you'll be fine. This is always a learning curve. Check. So. I got that. Uh, I am. Um, when I when I have done big things, I I often like do some thumbnailing or something beforehand, and um, because of the thing of like if it if it works small, like compositionally, that when it's big, if you're able to like nail that. But make it big and more detailed potentially. That um, it's still going to work visually, you know, have in the same kind of compelling way that it does really small. So like we're seeing that image behind you now, in a, a pretty small way, but it's actually really big. And um, and that's something that I have done when I do big things. I draw them f small and scale them up. Um, but I something I would like to do more is kind of. Um, I, I don't know if I if I do want to do it more, <laughs> maybe. But I feel like I do. But just just to go straight to big, like rather than figuring things out. But I I don't know. It's if it, if it was like a safe way to do it is to draw it little first. And I'd be like, if this looks look good see. little, yeah. it'll look good big. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm not there yet as far as like just starting big. Mm -hmm. I, I like doing stuff. Yeah. That's the thing. Like I like getting familiar with the subject. Yeah. Yeah. I like that stuff. Totally. That was nice to observe. I think. I'm over here trying to make it like a big mindset <laughs> deal. Like, 
oh, when you paint big, is it like you're huge in your mind and you're taking up space like we belong on the planet? Like, Jesus, dude. Oh, I actually saw recently, um, I, someone that I met when I was, I, I went to the IMC, Illustration Masterclass in, um, I think 2011, 2012. And um, someone I met there, Galen Dara, um, recently, well, at least I only saw it recently, um, that they started using a projector to scale up sketchbook pages that they liked, where they'd done lots of like experimental stuff in the, in the safety of this you know, small closed book. But then to be like, oh, there's something really cool about this. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna like project it up onto a wall and um and take that as like the seed the sketchbook page has these elements in it which then once they're put onto a large scale can then be explored even further in a in a new kind of dimension so you almost use it as like a thumbnail yeah. starting point yeah. And just yeah and that was something I, I had not seen before and i thought was a really interesting um like i so many People have such incredible sketchbooks, <laughs> um, and and when they're because it's like it's this the safe place that maybe no one's even going to see it, or you're just kind of like thinking on paper and playing around with ideas, and then the idea of taking something that's worked really well, I like it has its own life within the sketchbook, but then if it's um if if you if you want to explore and scale up into doing something different, that maybe that's a an interesting way to go about it like take the successes that you've had on a small scale and all the things that you feel good and comfortable with and um and find a w find a way to scale them up because i've also definitely also had the experience of trying to paint big and then being like you know having a crisis thinking i thought i could draw <laughs> This looks terrible. What am I doing? <laughs> and then it's super humble. Yeah, yeah. And then retreat back to the safety of something small, and maybe venture back to the bigger surface. And um, but there was something I I did a mural in twenty twenty. Was the first time um, I did a mural, and it was quite big. And I was kind of like, what am I going to do? Um, and at that time, I, I had a pretty uh, um, diligent sketchbook practice and I had been doing a lot of um, portrait sketches and I was kind of deliberating for a long time what should I actually do on this huge surface and at some point I was just like I should just pretend it's a page in a sketchbook <laughs> and I had Absolutely. Been, yeah and I had been doing these um, spontaneous compositions where I'd have like a whole bunch of faces on a page and then um, decided to make that what I do on the side of this house and I think that that worked out really well. And it was something um, I felt comfortable with. It was just a lot bigger than I had done it in the past. <laughs> For the mural, do you have to, did you just like Pretty go much. at it? I'm interested in yeah, it, it's a bit. Like, or do you have to like put it all up and like... That, no, that first stuff. one was pretty amazing um, because I basically, I had, I had a week to do it in and and then I was looking at the weather and I think I ended up doing the whole thing in three days and it, it basically was a giant sketch. Um, and when I started, I, I think I had a day that was almost like just preparing the wall, um, like figuring out how I was going to mm. do it. Where th but I ended up, I think there were 13 portraits on there. And when, when I started, I only had three of those faces lined up. And then as I started and I was like standing at the wall, people come to me and ask me or say, oh, I heard about what you were doing. And then I was like, can I put you on this wall? <laughs> and um, so the composition was evolving as I was there and present. So that was a really interesting experience because I had to like do things on the fly. So I'd, like take someone's photo and then I would, I would still like digitally try and plan it out in the composition, where's it gonna be? Like, I didn't just go from my phone to the wall. Like, I still, there was a lot of planning involved. Okay. But um, it was it was relatively um, spontaneous in that way, which was uh, really cool. Because it was people from the, the neighborhood that were being drawn on the building. Was this the building that was going to get? Uh, yeah, that's the one. Yeah, yeah. 
and kind of yeah, cool. and that so that that felt safe, you know. <laughs> it was like even if this, um, it, it had the same kind of uh, wonderful, kind of liberating, impermanent feeling of just like it made it feel more like a giant sketch, like as if I was doing it on paper. And um, and one of my friends who lives here was like, "How do you even like?" He he paints as well. I was like, "How do you even kind of prepare yourself mentally to paint on a wall?" <laughs> Um, this is like a house. This is, you know, this has substance and it belongs to someone and everyone sees it. And, um, but there was something about just kind of being like, um, yeah, the impermanence of it made it uh, a more kind of, um, it felt felt safer to, to play with it, basically. Um, yeah. And it also led to, to doing some other ones which have not been torn down. <laughs> so it was a, like an interesting step along the way. Um, but an interesting. I think if you can like. Mm -hmm. I was just going to say scaling up the tools was an important thing. Like when I realized, because at, at that time in my sketchbook, I was using the calligraphy pen a lot. And I really like the flat, broad edge, or when I paint using a flat brush. And it was like, instead of using a, a calligraphy pen, which is like this, if I just get a brush, which is this broad, and basically do the same strokes, but make them bigger. Um, it was a, a way of like scaling up what I was familiar with to a, a much bigger surface. Did you have to get like a long stick like to get away from it? Or were you like um, up close, run back, close, run back? No, it, I, was, I was on a scaffolding, so I, I couldn't get back very far unless I climbed down and walked away. So um, I had these, like I'd planned down points of reference where on my Basically, I, I had like a centimeter on my paper. My reference was like a meter on the wall. Um, and, and be able to like kind of plan it that way. And then I kind of work on a whole portrait and then climb down and see how it looks with everything. And But I, I feel very, um, I feel like the, the longing to, to be more free with it, less planned, like even though it was so spontaneous, it was still very planned. Um, but I guess that's... I mean, I think that would be yeah. super hard to, if you didn't plan it, you just kind of, unless you're like used to tagging and things like that. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's something, I, I feel this kind of, I think it would be amazing, but yeah, pretty, pretty scary. <laughs> Particularly if it's like a commission and a, you know belongs to someone, and and you're just kind of you have to be pretty confident with your your process uh, to just go at it like that. Yeah. Or pure confidence. So I feel like stencil art for tags and graffiti and stuff. When people throw up a stencil, it's really or like a wee mm -hmm. piece. You can do that. You can premeditate yeah. that at home. I think a lot of work too, though. Yeah. You get blisters on your hands, cutting the stencil out. Yeah, those. I I did a job with someone who did this giant octopus stencil, and it was like making the stencil took longer, <laughs> I think, than um. It was like a whole room inside a cafe, and um. And like, I, just, I think the process of making that sense and cutting everything out was so involved. But then once I got there, it's just like, bam, bam, bam. And then there's this giant octopus. Yeah. This guy is so wide. <laughs> Where's this guy? I went back to the car. Yeah. Oh, I found this, um, I wanted to tell people about it. There's this, uh, really cool way to learn about, um, facial anatomy that I discovered. Cool. I don't want to share. Okay. It's so, it's so wild. And, and I got suggested all these YouTube videos cause I like, like I get, I watch these like makeup artist videos and they're captivating. I'm like this. And then it started giving me celebrity 
plastic surgery uh-huh. analysis video. <laughs> and this one guy, he just like he goes through like all the actual terms of the facial anatomy. So if you're learning facial anatomy, it's this really addicting way to uh-huh. like incorporate that into our portraits and you learn what the rich and famous have done to their <laughs> Places. Yeah. Interesting. That is interesting. <laughs> is it? I don't know. Maybe this is interesting. But anyway, facial anatomy. It really helps. Yeah, totally. Portraits. I, I, I. Plus, and yeah. you're pretty down with um, like Latin terminology, and anatomy stuff. Like you, you enjoy it. I would say this part. What this part of the nose, it's kind of like a wing. <laughs> um, I'm sure there's like a... This part right here, this is your um, aerial... aerial. <laughs> the... What is it? I forget. It's a, it starts with an A and it has an R <laughs> and an L in it. And I think it's... The, it... Lots of words are like that. <laughs> the, the wing of the nose. <laughs> The wing. It's the nose wing. Oh, the nose wing. Yeah, we're going with nose wing. I gotta look it up now. No, I can't because internet. But I will later. This is a philtrum. I know that because I can have it shortened oh, really? and then I'll look younger. You look younger with a shorter philtrum. That's interesting. Yeah. What? What if you just hide That's it under a mustache? <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes, that's what I'm actually <laughs> doing. Yeah. yeah, like this lady exactly. You know, Chad commented earlier, this is another menu yeah. mustache. It's great. Ah. This woman is not taking any of <laughs> yeah. Um Joliana Designs just said, even though murals are my jam and I love them, I'm dealing with imposter syndrome over one getting thrown out this weekend. This conversation is all kinds of amazing, you guys. Ah. Thank you. I'm, I'm glad you're enjoying it. And uh, Julia said... Imposter yeah. syndrome is real. You did such a very good job, Dylan. It was so sad when they tore that house down. That that was part of the idea, though. It's like this is going to be torn down. <laughs> um, but it's a very real. So, were you happy when that happened? Oh yeah, that was like the combination. It's like it wasn't finished when it was finished painting. It was like it was finished when it fell down. <laughs> um, so that 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 was like the the closure of, of doing it. Um, and it, it also, in some way, it felt like a, a seed, and it has been because it was. It felt safe for me to do that. Like I was in this um, community cultural space where people were talking about what they do, what dreams they have, what they want to do. And someone wanted to get timber from demolished houses. And someone said, if you know of a house being torn down, let me know, I'll take the the timber out. And then I was like, if a house is being torn down, I want to paint on it. (laughs) And then a year later, um, that led to me being invited to paint on this house and which then also led to me being invited to paint on another house and so it was interesting that it had this short lifespan um and it was a lot of people thought it was terrible (laughs) that it was torn down i'm like why are you painting on the one that's being torn down what about that one (laughs) um but it was also was um for some people it seemed pretty confrontational. I think the people who got drawn on it, um, they were pretty happy with it. Before I heard from some other people, they were like, "How can you, how can you create someone's likeness and just let it be destroyed?" Like it seemed like um, it was confrontational for some people that um, to put that put effort into something and then have it just be um, brought to rubble, basically. Um, but interestingly, like thinking about it now that within that um, creative and destructive um, piece that it then it was it was like the seed for for new opportunities, um, which are still kind of uh, sprouting and um, yeah, just interesting. So this purpose yeah, totally. At least for you. I mean, I only yeah. like a second. Like, 
Yeah. Yeah, Juliana. It's, yeah, point, um, I've seen some of the murals you've been doing recently on your Instagram. It's so cool. Um, yeah, and I think it's, it's such a. I think it's a beautiful, um, like making something which is so public. Uh, it's like, interestingly, kind of like the opposite of a sketchbook when no one else sees. <laughs> um, but being able to have a relationship to it, which is like this, although it is, you know, this is a building and this is a very tangible thing. It's it's still it is it's a, it's a painted image. It's like it's pigment smeared across a surface. Um, but then you put it there and it becomes something which uh, belongs to everyone who sees it, really. And um, being part of the neighborhood and people. Um, people having their own kind of association well, with the it. difference between that and YouTube, like we're still mm. putting it out in public. Still in yeah, public. interesting. It's like lives in this digital. Yeah. What was that? Mm -hmm. So even if it's still not physically there, it exists. Yeah, they can't yell at us. <laughs> Only in the comments with caps lock and exclamation marks. Yeah. Although that hasn't really happened yet. Um, How dare you make this art out of light and electric stuff just to have it dissipate <laughs> and decay? Plus, you have to pay to see it because you have to pay. Yeah, you got to pay. You got to have your device, or you could watch on someone else's. Um, and you, you got to pay for electricity, your service provider. Yeah, it was graffiti is free to look yeah. at. What's the biggest thing you ever painted, John? Um I have something like eighty six feet by six seven. Nice. Six by eight. That's in River School size. So that's in the in the other room right now, and a couple other big ones that were like probably between four to five feet. They have around that. So this is like the smallest of the ones that are in there right now. This is. How big is this? I have a great big panel in the shed. I was supposed to paint a portrait commission on that I haven't yet. 31 by 24. Mm. That's how big it is, too. It looks big, and then I think I'm going to paint on it, and then I'm like, it's just too small. It's going <laughs> to look weird. But, like, Wait, I'm gonna get like a 24 by 36. I mean, it's big, but. It's like two by three feet. It's big, but like I'm like if I paint this guy's face on it, it's gonna be little, and then I just get stuck <laughs> there. Wait, how big are you painting the head? I should paint him like this big <laughs> in the middle of that two by three foot face. He's like an inch tall. No he's background. Like, <laughs> that yeah. Yep. That'll be three thousand dollars. <laughs> I'm an artist. That's a great idea. I'm an artist. I do. I can do whatever I want. Definitely. It's about freedom. <laughs> ah. These little earbuds hurt your ears after a while. They hurt your ears, and you're like, "Why does my ear hurt?" Oh yeah, because it's so. Because you got this little, got this little speaker jammed into it. Ooh. Now you're on the <laughs> other side. I drew this guy, I made him look like he was in fifth grade or something. <laughs> cool. All right. Like a plastic thing there. 
now you'll be looking at ladies' filters, <laughs> won't you? Uh, yeah, I won't be able to get enough yeah, of people's yeah. filters. Definitely want to see if they're short or not. Yeah. <laughs> you have to. Um, this field, this field is pretty <laughs> short, right? Mm. Kind of for the young lady in the middle. Yeah. 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 I would say so. I'm. I'm gonna put up the next. Re but her upper lip is mm. turned under. Shara wonders if we ever paint landscapes, and I did for the raccoons. Did you paint? Have you painted landscapes, John? E no. Landscape <laughs> of the face. The face is a landscape. Yeah. Um, I mean, as a background, yeah. But no, I want to do cityscapes more so than landscapes for now, unless I'm out there in the wild. I guess. Yeah. I just have a city around you me right now. Outside sketchbook. I I think I did like well I know I did I think it was about maybe about 10 years ago that I, I painted some landscapes but landscapes I felt were interesting for me um, also in photography and pe perhaps painting them is also a way to learn um, but I would feel like when I was somewhere breathtaking and awe-inspiring and I'm trying to take a photo of it, I'd be like, this is, this doesn't move me like the actual experience of being there. And I, I feel like if, if, if there was some way to bring, like I, I enjoy that about landscapes, the ones that I did that you can, you know, you can push things around, be like, if that tree was over there, the composition would be a bit tighter. That could be pretty cool. You can actually like change things a bit and you can take, the elements of what's in front of you and kind of um, change it a bit into a, um, a potentially a more powerful composition. Um, yeah. Yeah. But I remember the, the landscapes that I did. Yeah, I think it's... Because I'm always like drawing landscapes like it's a person's face and have to be true to the landscape. And then I send it to you and you're like, you could move this. And I'm like, <laughs> I could move if you put that over there, that'd be a really tight composition. That'd be great. <laughs> yeah. The... Let's do that to people's faces. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Yeah. That that. That's what plastic yeah. surgeons are doing. I think this would be great if you just if you just move this up a little bit. Have you ever thought about the the wasted space here? And if you bring, you know, maybe if the if the hair was a bit closer to the eye. It would be like a really tight composition. Yeah, this, yeah, this part right here, it's not, it's not really doing yeah. anything. We should paint idealized versions of ourselves. We'll draw self-portraits, but it will be like yeah. perfect. With like every right, hair in place. And every, that, that'd be really air. weird. And we should just, we should just mess it up. Yeah, sorry, John. <laughs> Okay. I'll draw my hair on John and and Dylan's beard right. on me. It's gonna be interesting. Then I will be perfect. Cool. I'm I'm gonna put up the next reference image if people feel um called okay. to draw this person, go for it. Or keep going with the ones you can't. If you joined us late in the game, um, as you can also read here that the wait that the reference link is in the description. I'm going to get one. Good idea. Stay hungry. Yes, yeah, yes. Um, this is Shannon's Hebrew professor. So you said before we went live that you lived in Florida. Where did, where did you grow up? I uh, grew up in Philadelphia, then Maryland. Went to Maryland about eighth grade. Uh, and in Florida was okay. Went to college in Sarasota. Stayed there for seven years. It's very comfortable down there. It's wild. 
by it. So yeah. I, mean, I couldn't live there today. <laughs> I mean, you live in Orlando, you know. It's good weather. I didn't. I didn't have my my hearing earbuds in, so I didn't know where it's wild and cold. Oh, uh, Florida. Oh yeah. So wild so the the warm weather makes it comfortable because you can just you can just be. Warm weather. Back then it was kind of cheap mm -hmm. as well. So your cost of living is lower. You could def I mean, I had a house that was under a thousand dollars. A whole house. Yeah, whole house. Wow, cool. Not attached. And yeah, like it's it's definitely an easier life work wise, things like that, but like politically not for me. Mm hmm It's a it's a it's a crazy place. In Sarasota? Uh, Florida in general, I'd say. I think it's it's like drastically different by like block. Like you can just cross the street and you're in a different world in Orlando. Kind of the same as Sarasota. Claire says the same in Sarasota as well. Yeah, it's hard to judge a like a whole uh, U.S. state by one state, but like Florida in general. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's a huge state, but the parts I've been in, yeah, it's it's definitely the deep south. People forget. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's like the deep south made up of the north. It's like, it's hard to describe. The, like the fifth and sixth generation Floridians are like their own special little world. Yeah, there's Floridians, and then there's like, mm -hmm. The New Yorkers that it's like just New York people, the people that have been born and bred in Florida, which is weird. I don't know a lot of people in New York. You're in okay. Florida right now. <laughs> My friend William moved from here to New York City, and and it's so weird because when I knew William, he was like a grocery store clerk, and now he's got like a baby and a wife, and a really cool apartment and he's so cool is this really shannon's hebrew teacher <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> he just looks just like well not just like he looks like young awesome too but he needs glasses to be awesome all right so um he reminds oh, me oh claire hitchhiked in maryland one time I'm hi claire sorry. claire is my sister and Claire hitchhiked around the States for a while and had some fun stories and adventures. That was brave. It was brave, yeah. Um, I, I had been hitchhiking around Europe and then I went back to Australia and I was like, hey Claire, hitchhiking is so good. Um, and Claire had often been, um, I guess, afraid of the outside. <laughs> um, and then I was like, hey, Claire, let's go hitchhiking together just around our home. And one of the first people who picked us up opened up the the trunk of the car and there were all these chopped up bones inside. Um, and, but it was for their, their St. Bernard's. They had these uh, bones for their dogs. Super nice guy. Took us <laughs> took us where we wanted to go. But if it was just like, wow, this is a... Did you see the dogs? <laughs> we did see the dogs. <laughs> yeah, had, um, had his kid in the car with him. And, um, and I was like, hey, Claire, look, there's nothing to be afraid of. <laughs> look at all the bones in this car. Um, so that was a really interesting kind of initial hitchhiking experience. And after that, then Claire was like, well, if I can do this, I can go hitchhiking across the States. Uh, <laughs> um, and Claire found like a, a hitchhiking buddy online and they, they went on an adventure together. And survived. And survived, and yeah. Did you it was very killy. <laughs> Something died for those bones, for sure. It's not, but it was funny because it wasn't the first time I had got a ride with someone with a load full of bones. So, um... <laughs> well, the Where first time happen? was in Sweden. Um, oh, yeah. 
it was this it's probably <laughs> uh it was a truck driver and um he I, I don't know what the deal was but he was driving a truckload of bones and um <laughs> with no he, no he had no sound bernards he was just doing his job he was he was really upbeat and um <laughs> bone trucker what do you do I'm a bone trucker. i don't think he i don't know if he drove bones all the time <laughs> but that's what he had that that day yeah, and he, he took me where he was going. And um, he's like, oh, yeah, I, I can take you to that place, but I just need to do a detour because I've got to take my, I've got, I've got to take this load of bones <laughs> to this um, place deep in the forest in Sweden. <laughs> I was like, okay. It worked out. I can take you, but I have to get <laughs> Yeah. Can you touch all this for me? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, one time someone in the U.S. opened up a trunk full of uh -huh. horses. They were apparently a scout leader. Uh -huh. If they're not wearing a uniform at that point, scout leader. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay, I'm a scout leader. <laughs> Everything I do, I'm going to say I'm a, a den mother. A den mother. Okay, I'm a den mother. <laughs> Go to bed. Lights out. Make me a s'more. Not s'mores? <laughs> s'mores. I'm a step mother. Oh, that was Claire's story about the trunk of axes. Hmm. Uh huh. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. I was reading the comments. It wasn't me. I've only ever picked up hitchhikers. I've never ever oh. been a hitchhiker. Thank you for. Is this in the U.S.? You're picking up hitchhikers? Yeah. I picked up a pregnant hitchhiker. They were, they have mm -hmm. to be female for me to pick up. They have to be female and smaller than me. <laughs> okay. And pregnant in this case is this hitchhiker. It's interesting. Boy, yeah. she talked a lot. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure she had a story if she's pregnant and hitchhiking. I don't think it was true, honestly, John. Her story? The story it had a little, it had some fictitious elements. Not that I mind. I mean, I like a good story as much as anybody else. But yes, I did give her ten dollars and tell her to get out of the car. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> As nicely as you can. And then I went back later and I checked on her and she didn't remember me. But maybe her babies will remember me. Maybe her babies will remember. Because she said there were three of them. She was pregnant with three. She was But that's what she said. That's what she said. So she we she have, can... having triplets? She said she was going to have triplets. Wow. I think she was just like um maybe she wasn't real like maybe like it was just like a thing in my life that I had to do. I had to pick up the pregnant lady with It was a, some kind of mythological experience. Mm. Maybe yeah. And then I was meant to talk about it on YouTube and maybe she'll see this or like she'll her children will be watching this. She's <laughs> like yeah, Four years later. There, there, there'll be some 24 year olds watching this if now. You, if you're a triplet and you're 24 uh, in the States <laughs> or maybe somewhere else in the world, um, Shannon could be talking. Mm -hmm. His mom is in Florida. Yeah. Talking about your <laughs> mom. <laughs> Telling me the truth. Yeah. Out. Who knows? You remember her name? No, I don't remember her name. I might not have known her name. I remember what she was wearing. Triplets would be cute, but very expensive. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. I had, um, had, I have, haven't seen him for a while. 
when I was hitch- hitchhiking around a uh, friend, um, we, we were loosely planning a hitchhiking adventure together. And, and he had traveled a lot. And he was like, how about... Oh, we actually had this really... We, we thought we could make a book about it, about just hitchhiking around. Um, and it was like, yeah, and everywhere we could go, we could just make up characters for ourselves and introduce us as someone else. Because um, <laughs> you go through, when you're hitchhiking, it's like, it can be a day and 20 different people take you a part of the way. And then it's often like, you know, the similar questions, um, retelling the same story. So it'd be interesting to um, to just make a new story. Didn't happen. Yeah. One of you could have been pregnant with triplets if you wanted. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe that was my friend. <laughs> so is there a destination or are you just kind of hitchhiking um, experience a hitchhike? I, when I started hitchhiking, I had kind of, I ran out of money <laughs> and I was in Europe and I had, um, come to Europe from Australia and had broken up with my girlfriend and was just kind of like, oh, what am I doing? Why am I even in this country or continent? And um, uh, I really would like to see more of more of Europe, but I have no money. And I had some friends who were like, you could just hitchhike. You don't need money to see more of Europe. <laughs> and I was like, really? Is that a thing I could do? And, um, and then I started just by, um, this was like, this was, this was even like pre Facebook, or this was just when Facebook was starting. But there were some online platforms for um, one, like, one was called Hospitality Club, which was pre couch surfing, if you're familiar with that, where um, people would like host each other. And then there would be these, um, there was like an online forum, and you could organize events. And I would get in touch with people and like, oh, I'm in your, your city or your country. How about we meet up? <laughs> because it'll be like, you have some similar interests in your bio. So, hey, let's meet. <laughs> and, um, and then when I started hitchhiking, I was basically hitchhiking to like hospitality club parties. <laughs> I was like, hey, there's going to be a party in this city in a different country on the weekend. Do you want to come? I was like, oh, okay. And that's kind of how it started. Um, and it was a lot of, yeah, um, going with the flow. Uh, so the, I didn't, there wasn't like a main destination in mind, but I might meet someone and I'm like, oh, I'm going to go to Portugal. You want to come with me? I'm like, okay. And um, it was a time of my life where I was very unbound and free. Um, yeah. Is this your experience of Europe, John, when you were in Paris? Is there a lot of Australian hitchhikers sleeping in? I never saw a one. I wasn't uh, in Paris. Pont de Vin is a very small town on the west coast of Britain. Oh. So farmland. Uh, um, yeah. Didn't have a one? Oh, yeah. What all, all French. No stoplight. Oh, uh, yeah. No stoplight. I'm sorry? I was going to ask you what took you there, but it was probably an airplane. <laughs> uh, airplane is an eight-hour wow. bus ride. If you're have, what made if you not, like a three-hour three train ride. How long ago? I interned 2008. To 2009. What was that like? Was it that when you were working for Ralph Lauren? Oh, no, no, no. So when I graduated college, I went in August for the fall semester to intern. Then I got to do figure drawing and co teach illustration second semester, which was cool. That's so cool. And uh, tell us about the school, because I didn't catch where you went to college at the beginning. So I went to Women's College of Art and Design. What College of Art and Design? 
Ringling. Like the oh, you went to structure. Ringling? That mm -hmm. was in Florida. Yep, Sarasota. I'm putting it all together. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I wasn't just hanging out there. <laughs> and, like, fire making community. I was, I was there. Oh, for... I would love to have gone to Ringling. That's so cool. So you were, like, chilling with Disney artists and stuff. Like, um, who else went to Ringling that we know? Oh, that dude, Aaron Blaze, went to Ringling. He talks about Ringling. I want to go to Ringling. I want... I was gonna go to Rollins College. I wanted to not Rollins. Um, Full Sail. I wanted to go to Full Sail. Have you heard of that? Like the uh, they're like an animation oh. program. Mm -hmm. Like the accelerator program. I don't know. I think they do like an online thing now. But I was in Winter Park and it was only um, it was only like a it was like a two year program or something like that. I did not do that. Oh, uh, that's so cool! You went to Ringling. What was that like? Uh, at first, it was very intimidating college experience as far as art is concerned. High school, you're usually going to be like one of the, I guess in your your head, the best in your in your school or or, or your class or whatever. Then you go to college, and you have people. probably more dedicated than you up, up until that point. And you're thrust into this place where you're no longer like up there. You're 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 now down towards the bottom and you kinda it's very humble. Mm -hmm. Um but the environment that we were in was really good. The people there were uh it was very much a a family kind of environment. Not too much crazy like competition or anything like that. If there was competition, it was in a good way to push each other, and we like would hang out together and and like do stuff like yeah, this. Cool. We go to each other's dorm rooms and like just sit around and draw or paint and talk about art and who you're looking at and all this other stuff. And no, it's and I I still live I live in my building. Three people I went to art school with. Oh wow. Uh -huh. Girlfriend. I was just about to ask if you still had contact with your friends from there. Oh, yeah. Cool. Are they working as artists, too? Or yeah, they're all doing or... different stuff. Some are doing fashion. Some are doing uh, mostly just freelance. And some are doing, like, hybrid stuff. Okay. All illustration majors in this building. How long were you there? In this building in New York? 13 years. There, but also at Ringling House, so 2008, 9, 10, 13 years. That takes us to the present, <laughs> Don. No, 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 I graduated in 2008. Oh, 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 you had a couple missing years. Where were you? I started in 2002. Yes. And I had a super expensive. <laughs> And then I went back. What would you tell somebody trying to get into Ringling? Think about it seriously if you really need art school or not. I think I needed it, but I don't think everyone mm -hmm. needs it. I needed to see what was possible. Because I, I didn't know the artists that I know. I didn't know the things that I know now. And I didn't know where to find those things. Yeah. So, in the, in the relationships and the contacts that you, you have are huge, but I needed those. Some people don't. Yeah. There's a lot of self-taught people that are phenomenal. I imagine. Um, so I would just that the the community aspect of it must be so cool. It's the, the main reason that I would ever tell anyone to go to art mm -hmm. school. If you can afford it, do it. But if it's going to be a strain, there's so many other programs now where you could just go like to Illustration Society or any of these like uh, smaller things. Mm -hmm. I would do those. It seems more expensive up front, but it's not. It's you'll learn more 
quicker, especially if you have an idea of what you want to do. Did you know what you wanted to do? I did. Uh, so I wanted to be a traditional animator. And my sophomore year is when Disney started, they, they, they made the, the switch to computer animation. And Ringling got rid of the traditional animation program and used it just as a prerequisite for computer animators, which I didn't mm -hmm. want to do. So I had to go into illustration and kind of figure it out. But that was the reason I went to Ringling is because Disney hired animators from Ringling. Okay. So they had a very strong program. But I did not get to do that. And how was... Um... How do you feel about that? Do you yeah. still have the desire to to work in, tr in traditional 2D animation? Oh yeah, absolutely. And I still mess with it on the iPad. I do storyboarding. And I've like done my own walk cycles and things like that. But I would need like a dedicated amount of time to be able to do like a little animation like I would like to, and actually study it like I want to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like just the absolute immersion that you hear from animation students is like pretty overwhelming. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of drama. Yeah. yeah. So. And how is it with um, like something I I find interesting because I was I was like l leaning towards illustration for a while um, and and learned from some amazing teachers, um, but I have really. I'm been mostly drawn towards portraiture, and I, and I wonder how that is for you, because um, it's definitely a strong portraiture uh, direction in in the work that you share on Instagram, um, and having studied illustration and with that kind of animation, um, kind of idea in the background, maybe like how how do you feel like what what is the role of uh portraiture in in those endeavors um i think that i think i'm more of a fine artist and illustrator mm -hmm. and i didn't realize that until after school but illustration you learn those skills yeah you learn all the you learn all the skills you need to learn a at least for what I wanted to be, like a solid fine artist with solid foundation, like value, color, shape, perspective, all those things. You learn that as an illustrator. Yeah. You don't usually learn that in a fine arts program. It just kind of let you do your thing and be expressive. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to have some control over what I was doing. And portraiture. I think to me is like the ultimate, I guess, it's a way to see where you are as far as like uh, depicting realistic things in the world. So whether it be it's a still life or, or a person, the person is going to be the most complex thing you probably mm -hmm. come across. If you can pull that off, all the weird shapes melting into other shapes, uh, that was my draw to portraiture. Yeah, I think that's just that will always be there. So I think if I can nail a portrait, you can nail just about anything. Yeah. Um, what was that? So it becomes kind of like a. A measure like for yourself. Yes. I can totally see that. Yeah, I'm just constantly trying to test myself to you know. I mean. to torture myself, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting the um I don't think it's it's not a polarity. Um 
really. But there's the thing about illustration and fine art. Um, Because I I remember um, like being told that uh, like a pure portrait can't be an illustration. Uh, I'm not not much into like blanket statements of saying something can or can't be a thing. But um, at the the time it was like really like, ah, okay. Um, Because as I was kind of um, pursuing that direction a bit, and but realizing like each thing I tried to do, I tried to make it a portrait, and um, um, so did you go to school? Were you illustration? No, or I, you I didn't go to school. I, I went. I studied architecture. Oh. Um, I studied architecture, and then I, I drifted around Europe, <laughs> and um, and I, I had made a conscious choice not to do art. <laughs> Um, even though it was my favorite thing at school. And, um, Mm -hmm. but then after a few years kind of drifting around Europe, I was like, oh, maybe I should just do art. (laughs) Um, Because architecture was, that was kind of like a technical drawing and stuff. Um, I went into architecture because it's still a creative kind of pursuit and there's drawing involved, but um, I really enjoyed the, um, the conceptual phase um but then when it came down to actually drawing something that could theoretically stand and putting in all of the detail that was that was not my strong point um yeah and then i i left i left australia intending to travel for a year and then go back to my studies and be inspired um but it just kind of inspired me not to go back to architecture and then i kept traveling and in a, a long roundabout way um, led towards realizing that, oh, actually, I'd really like to draw. <laughs> and so that led to... Um, to self Yeah. Oh, no. Well, partially. Um, I've spent a lot of time on it, but that I had thought about going to school in Europe. Um, Kira, my wife, is German, and we were in Australia at the time. And I was like, oh, maybe should I should I study? Is it possible for me to do like a master's in illustration or something? And that was funny because looking for that and wondering, like I didn't really want to go back to university because um, kind of felt like I had just, it had been a long, like a long haul with architecture and I, I wasn't kind of called, called back to studying. But looking into that led towards the illustration masterclass and Kira actually found it because she was looking for masters in, astra- in illustration. And she was like, oh, look at this thing in the States. We were in Australia at the time. And then I looked at the illustration masterclass and they just listed all of these illustrators who I like admired. And I was like, all of these people are gonna be in this play at the same time. <laughs> um, and so from Australia, I was like, I, I, I probably wouldn't have done it. Makira was like, if this is what you really wanna do, then you know, just make it happen, just go. And so, um, we actually moved from Australia to Germany. And then a few months later, I went to Massachusetts to go to the illustration masterclass for a week. And that was kind of like, instead of going to art school, I did that. <laughs> and that was um, the immersion and, um, and a lot of what I kind of felt I was missing or like the, the missing pieces that I didn't understand how to even start a drawing, basically. I just had... Um, you know, surrounded by all these people for a week who were, some of them are in art school, some of them are seasoned professionals. And, and that was just like this, um, almost overwhelming download of input. Um, and that was like the, the kind of breakthrough event. And since then, I, I've just kind of focused on improving my, um, skill set i guess but without really a clear um vision in mind like for a while i thought maybe fantasy illustration maybe kids books um there are lots of things that interest me and a lot of um yeah but it just kind of kept coming back to portraits and um so that's what i'm doing (laughs) but that was like instead of art school i went to the illustration masterclass and um did some online 
online classes and and that was like just like you're saying that it, it seems expensive up front and i think it was maybe two and a half or three thousand dollars for a week um but the people that i met there said coming to this is like doing a year of art school it's just like there's so much um so much knowledge and experience to be shared here and yeah it really um i really i, I learned a lot through that it's cool we're we're drawing like one of my most influential teachers or, like, <laughs> not really him, but this guy that's reminding me of him. but uh was there anybody did you have a teacher at ringling that really influenced you john oh. like there was like that you still think of all the time yeah i mean there's a few and i, I met some throwing like study abroad and others uh, okay so there's different teachers kind of spark different things which is why i think that if you can afford art school do it because you get those kind of moments where what they're saying to you maybe doesn't resonate with the whole class maybe resonates with four or five people but some of those things just stay in your head and rattle around until you're able to actually do them or it makes sense to you because you're getting thrown a lot of information whether it's uh, the smaller programs or art school in general so you're getting a lot of concepts a lot of rules which are you find to be B bs in the end but you find out what kind of is important so i had a teacher mrs french who she did intro to illustration so she had to teach the boring stuff the stuff that no one wants to learn so perspective mm -hmm. <laughs> shape design value stuff and we all just want to get into it and and draw our favorite thing and so mrs french would tell us you know you gotta you gotta master this you gotta and she's one of those teachers where her work was the proof she was phenomenal. Like she could, did very intricate drawings and illustrate it for years. Like she had an impressive, she has an impressive resume. So the class is very dry, very boring, but she was teaching things that you needed if you wanted to be good. So a lot of that stuff stayed with me. And so every couple of years I'll go back and do a refresher course with like basic stuff value perspective shape all that stuff. edges if you're doing representational work um, another teacher who's our illustration media teacher Don Brandis he's had a lot of Good little chestnuts of wisdom. And he would kind of tell us, this is senior year, where he kind of got a little bit rougher with us, but he's like, if we're just, if we just keep working on a piece and it's not going anywhere, he's like, you're just, you're just polishing the turd. <laughs> and that always kind of just stuck in my brain. And when I'm thinking about it, I'm just getting in there. I'm like, you're just polishing the turd. Like, just move on. <laughs> this is done. <laughs> for better or worse, it's done. And then uh, when I studied abroad, this teacher was from RISD, Rhode Island, uh, school in Providence. And Melissa Ferreira, who she lives in France now, the place where we studied abroad, I've never seen anyone as this woman. And you had no excuse you could give her that would fly. <laughs> but we watched her, I think it was spring break or something, and she was working on a piece. I have it in my home, it's hanging right over there. And she only worked in daylight hours, so she would go <laughs> sit in her window for all of the daylight and then stop and 
of course, when it became night, but we would see her walking to and from the town because her place was, was just overlooking the street, and she'd just be in the window, sitting there looking at us, and we're like, oh, man, I should be drawing or something like that. <laughs> and, and she would just have this beautiful piece at the end of the week that she put 80, 90. She used a brush that was like super, like a, a one or a zero, just getting in there and... And there was no excuse of like, oh, well, why does this not look like it's supposed to look? Like, I think someone was drawing something in the class and it was like, it required, she said, like, well, just go buy a piece of fruit and figure it out. Yeah. You guys need to like, she was our, our illustration teacher and she mm -hmm. didn't play. Um, so yeah, she was a big influence on me. And she was a big influence on, um, Keeping the sketchbook, she required it. And it was very uncomfortable at first for everyone in that class to keep the sketchbook because she was like, "Yeah, you gotta have you know this many pages by the end of the week or by the end of the semester. You gotta finish this mm -hmm. book." And it became second nature by the end. Yeah, yeah. Intense. So with those three people, probably those are the most influential. That's awesome. Those yeah. are the ones that stand out right now. Yeah, cool. I love that you went to a school that like actually taught you how to draw. Like it seems to be really rare. I don't think they did. In schools and like choosing a school and uh, choosing a school, you know? Actually I, I say like the the students, we taught each other how to draw. Like, we had to mm -hmm. put in the work work. We would always get together like after classes and stuff like drawing. There were student running clubs for as like for figure drawing clubs. There were they do Battle Dome, which was like they would just do digital paintings and stuff in a computer lab. So it was more the students than the teachers. The teachers were almost just like tough love. <laughs> so we get paid either way. Whether you show up or not, we don't yeah. care. So here's the syllabus. Here's what we're doing. You're gonna be graded, figure it out, type of thing. And it would help you if you if you want to help, but you would have to go to them, make them earn, earn their money. But they're not gonna to come to you like you know it's not mm -hmm. high school. So they will definitely yeah, like leave you to like, your own devices. But there's yeah, a lot of like uh, you have, yeah. talented people at Ringling, so everyone pushed each other. That's great. It was interesting. What, we should all have that yeah. kind of pressure. Um, what you said, was it Mrs. French who taught like the those foundational things that no one wants to learn? Because um, it, it sounds similar to um, in architecture, there was one, one semester, one class called design drawing principles, which is where like we mm -hmm. learn how to draw a box in perspective and learn how to draw a clean line. And, um, and those really like um, foundational basic things. And that was like the one drawing class, um, like first year, first year, first semester design drawing principles. And that's like, that's what all, that's how you'll be making your work for the rest of this course, basically, until it like moved into digital stuff. Um, yeah, and that was uh, when people were like, oh, uh, um, it's interesting because people thought about architecture. They were like, oh, you, you must be really good at math to do architecture, which I'm totally not. That other people think it's very math and like engineering. <laughs> um, and people were like, oh, yeah, you're, you're good at drawing, so you must be good at architecture. And I was like, well, um, it's, a, it's a different kind of drawing. Um, yeah, but I... You fixed my math earlier. I, I fixed you what? You fixed my math. You corrected my math earlier. <laughs> so really yeah. Well, I thought maybe you thought that you were going to get online in 19 minutes. So maybe it was true. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Charlotte wants to know what your favorite medium is. Yeah. Oh, Dylan, you were going to ask. No, but thank you for asking because I, I haven't. <laughs> okay. My favorite medium, probably oil paint right now. Cool. And the, do you paint? Even, 
Do you have a spot? Do you have a place you like to paint? Do you paint in your in your house? In your brain. Yeah. Yeah. A window where you can look down at the people who are not painting. Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna get in the studio. The mirror, so I can just you know self deprecate all that. <laughs> Mirror's the best place for that. <laughs> well, I keep a mirror everywhere. Because you have to, I mean, at least I do, like, just to get the reflection of the drawing, make sure it's straight yeah, cool. and all that stuff. I actually haven't looked at this one for a while. Oh, that's something I do on the live stream, right? I should, uh, if I look on the screen, I can tell how bad it is. Yeah. How inaccurate I should be. <laughs> Not bad. T turn it upside down here so I can see it, oh, see it on the screen. I haven't seen yours yet. Yeah. Oh, yours, are looking, yours are looking good. This is fella. You've got oh, you almost two done. Uh, are we on Yule Burner yet? Uh, if you want. Sure. I want. Right. I want to get to Yule Burner. Let's, are you guys doing Yule Burner do yet? Let's move on. I mean, I'm still on this first two. Uh, might go to I don't know. I kind of want to like go back and forth because I still, this guy still looks like he's about. 15 minutes to picture. Um, yeah, so we, we theoretically have like an, another 50 minutes for this next portrait if you want to do it or if you want to keep working on what you're doing. Who's who's still here in the in the chat? Thank you, Thank you all for being here. That's so cool. Um, just saw there's still a bunch of people hanging out drawing with us. And if any, any questions arise as you're listening, and drawing along, feel free to ask. <clears throat> yeah, this is um. So did you finish your degree? Or... The architecture. <laughs> what? I, I so I. In the time that I was gone, I left for a year, um, and thought I'll come back after a year, and then I will just like rock the rest of my course, and then I was just like, oh no, I I don't actually want to go back. <laughs> Um, and in the time I was gone, they actually came, changed the course structure. So instead of being five years, it was three. Um, and it was, so it was like a, um, a diet degree. <laughs> it was not, a, I, I, not a full fledged architecture, um, graduate. So I have, um, a bachelor of architectural studies. But when I, so when I went back, they had changed the course structure and then I was able to wrap it up in in one semester instead of having to do another two and a half. So, yeah, so I um, oh, nice. I did go back and I and I was really like, I, I felt like really super motivated. And I was like, yeah, I'm gonna, you know, and now I've got all this life experience that I'm gonna bring to this and I'm gonna, I'm gonna be diligent, I'm gonna do it. Um, it was hard, it was so hard though. <laughs> um, but f fortunately, um, yeah. Uh, one really cool thing was they had a new class called Indigenous Design Perspectives, which was awesome. And um, and the main main part of the syllabus that I had to do uh, was focus on model building. So we had to design a building, and then rather than being really get into the nitty gritty of the details of the drawings, which was not my my strong point. Um, we actually got to make something, so that was really cool. Um, but by the end of it, it was kind of like, oh, this is not my thing. <laughs> I was I was motivated at the the beginning of it. It's like, yeah, this is maybe I will become an architect. Maybe I can really do this. But it was um, I I see the people, and I still follow some of them on Instagram, and see the people who really loved it and lived it. Like they they're rocking it, and they they're doing really cool stuff, and it was. That was never me, really. Um, but yeah, I did. I. I Some of those you gotta get. Yeah, it, yeah. Figure it out. I. There were things we did um, in the class. Also, the community was really cool. Like, actually learning and doing something together with a bunch of people. Um, and there was a lot of cool, like. Uh, design and there was kind of a, a semester with kind of art history and philosophy kind of stuff and um so i think there were important things that i experienced in that time 
Um, but I've, I've never worked as an architect. Yet. Yeah. <laughs> I have drawn some buildings, though. I had a, had a commission last year where um, someone who had worked um, in, the, in the city where I live, uh, I, I had like a, rented a co-working space for a while and um and they met someone who had a friend who worked at this business where they they did a lot of city planning stuff and the uh, um the boss was retiring and so i was commissioned to do a painting that had a map of the city and a lot of the buildings which she had um like co coordinated and supervised the building of and i was like oh this maybe this is why i studied architecture <laughs> so i can do this painting of buildings <laughs> yeah very niche. I want to be an architect. I don't want to do architecture. If I was an architect, I would never put plumbing in the wall. It should never be. Why is plumbing in the wall? Plumbing should always be exposed. Is this about like you? So it, um, issues. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, it's like I know. Let's run water through a house. That if it fails in a predictable amount of time, let's let's hide it. <laughs> Oh, they really have to work for it. What were your solution? <laughs> Hi, Cora. Let's put it. It's just like a little little secret hiding spot for your water to just leak out. <laughs> like, I, I just, I, just I think it's for the economy. I think it's to keep, you know. It's to keep plumbers in business. Well, jokes on them. <laughs> cool. So, San is still here, working in gouache and black pencil. Dimitris Timas, um, you're welcome. I'm, I'm glad you're here with us, working in ballpoint pen. Um, Juliana still here, heading off. Oh hi. Not in cold countries, it freezes. <laughs> in pipes first. Yeah, but it should be exposed. We should be aware. Hi, Cora and, and Terry. That drawing of Asang is amazing, Dylan. What was that? You drew Asang. You you actually drew. I just, I just got to put glasses on professor. him. Yeah, okay. we. Ooh. They would have to run right. on the inside. Give me some glasses. It can be Asang. Yeah. I'll find a picture for you to. All right. Thank. Yourself. Thank you. I look, I look forward to seeing it. <laughs> I'll just imagine it. And, yeah. Are you more comfortable with pen and ink or like pencil? You run through the pen and ink. Yeah. Really well. Maybe I could do this one with, with the pen. I, I had, I think it was about four years where I only used ink, pen and ink or ink wash. And, um, and then I was invited by Sketchy to teach in a, a, a pencil <laughs> class. It was pen and pencil, I think. I was, I was teaching pen and it was alternating days of pen and pencil. Is that how it worked? But for some reason, Sketch, Sketchy got me back to pencil. And then I was like, wow. Um, like looking along, because there were some pretty amazing teachers who were teaching. And I was like, oh, how, you know, how do they do what they're doing and stuff? And um, I found that the years of working in ink had um, they had given new confidence to my pencil work. Um, yeah, and somehow recently I've I've been doing a lot of pencil stuff. I've been ink for a long time, and and I've just been enjoying pencil a lot recently. But most of the stuff on the wall behind behind me is ink. Cora wonders why we're drawing. <laughs> <laughs> why are we drawing you, Runner? Um, John, would you like to tell us why you selected this why? image? <laughs> uh, why would you not want to draw your Runner? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's true. The hair. Yeah, I'm almost finished with a, a big painting. You'll, I'll turn it so you oh, cool. come back. And this is reason for you. I like you because I like his movies. Magnificent Seven, Ten Commandments. There's a bunch of other Western 
games too, but yeah, he's a. Uh... Oh, you guys see it? Oh he's yeah, cool. Cowboy. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah. Big circular guy down there. I can't see it. Yet. See it? My Skype window's gone. I just gotta, I gotta wait for YouTube oh, okay. to show me how to fix it though. Very cool. Oh, yeah, these very small I'll wait for it to catch up. Because so. he's pretty. This is a pretty, pretty guy. That too. <laughs> There's a movie star who's also a flying trapeze artist. And it starts with a B. It starts with a B? Burt Lancaster. He was, a, was he a trapeze Yeah, I think so. I don't know if I... I mean, rarely do I take reference uh, by who they are, unless it's like a Black History Month thing, or I'm... I usually just look for strong mm -hmm. features. No matter who they are. This is tricky because there's like the light is there's a lot of lights going on. Tricky for the yep. for the sharp shadows. There's only like the key light is given a sharp shadow, but there's a lot of film. Did you learn a lot? Like when you were at um, animation school, I bet you had like a lot of. Um, facial expressions that you do you use that in your portraiture still um like, i don't think i was really good at portraiture during school i was more like i was better at figure work and like gestures and things like that i went through a phase where i just studied anatomy like crazy and i would just draw really small and just draw these really intricate things and I didn't really, I couldn't put it all together yet. So I think that's kind of what I can use. Just gathering skills along the way, and then at some point, I learned how to put it all together. Put it all together Expressions, things like that. I was also trying to get a head that looked like a head. Mm -hmm. Even by like senior year, it was still a struggle. Now you've like definitely broken through that. Sometimes. <laughs> it's a. Uh... Yeah, once you think you have something artistically, then there's a. There's always something that comes up. When you draw people, do you do you guys ever find yourself and like in the chat too? Like when you draw somebody with a face, you catch yourself making the same face. Because these Earth's World pictures, I was trying not to have like the same face I was drawing. So I was like this, like I was drawing, and I'm like, don't do it. Don't <laughs> make that expression. But now with Yul Brenner, I'm like, ooh, I'm like, <laughs> you guys just do that? Oh, yeah, it definitely helps. I'm not sure what my face there. <laughs> Helps to get the expression yeah. right to do the face. <laughs> I know for like figure drawing and stuff like that, I will like try to figure out yeah, what the form to feel what the model was feeling. Yeah. You ever draw a model and then like um, while you're staring at the model, that particular part that you're drawing twitches <laughs> and you're like, I haven't. I mean, that. they always move. But, but like, like muscle spasm, like as you're watching. It? Yeah, or like if you're drawing somebody's pinky, like they could be like standing there in the model, like totally laid and all set up and everything, and then like you just get to the hand, and then all of a sudden they're like, oh, my pinky itches, and then like I did that <laughs> with my mind, basically. Oh. Your attention calls. Yeah. 
The game more influential than I am. I don't have carry like powers, I don't think. Uh -huh. yeah. I like to do, you, do you still do much uh, life drawing? And you, you know. Uh, not really. Every once in a while, I'll try to get somebody to go with me to like a drink and draw or some of that. But mm -hmm. usually, I just kind of do it from any reference yeah. I have yeah. at home. It's a little less. Is it okay, left drawing? Are you? Did you go to drink and draw? They still do that. That's good. Oh yeah. Are you close to the Art Students just... League? My friend Jay Kwan, he goes to the Art Students League. He did this really beautiful portrait from the Art Students League. They have a live model and I hate. I mean, they have a good one. Society Illustrators has a good one. Oh, that's so cool. You're so cool. Um, there's tons of places. Yeah. That's neat. But um, Art Students League is pretty far from me. Pretty far? Yeah, it's far. It's in, it's in the city. I did taking a couple classes there. I went to um, the first figure drawing I ever did was at the Society of Illustrators, and um, it was it was amazing. Like they had two models, they had live music, and um, I I haven't been to much. Most of my drawing practice, figure drawing, has been online. Or I, I actually I hosted live drawing uh, for a while in in my my town um that was I so cool um i did it for okay. because i one of the the guys i was in touch with um from illustration masterclass i was i was um complaining to him on facebook just saying there's no way to go draw here like i was like hungry for the experience um but in the the city where i live there was just like I couldn't couldn't find anything. It's like a small town and not much of a visual arts focus here. And um and he's like, Well, just do it yourself. <laughs> he's like, if if you can't find it anywhere, just you know, you just you be the guy who does it. <laughs> I was like, huh, okay. And um and and I just rode around in our circle of friends, a lot of people who like just not really into drawing at all <laughs> or not as like a main thing. But I was just like, there were um, physicists and medical students and um, some hippies who like getting undressed and posing for us. And um, everyone would bring food and we would like draw for two hours and then eat together. And it, that was that was amazing. Um, and it sounds like what they're doing up the street. Remember when I almost went to the drawing group? They're oh. still doing it. And it's like two blocks yeah, away. Cool. And that was um and it still has some places yeah. but i I drew a lot of people that didn't look like people <laughs> and um <laughs> they didn't look like people or the drawings didn't look like people? <laughs> the, the drawings <laughs> um uh, and that that was that was the advice do more figure drawing and um yeah, and I kept doing that until we we had um, had our first kid, and then our our flat was basically one room, and um, and then it kind of didn't really work out so well anymore. <laughs> but, How many do you have? Uh, I have three now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He really has three. It's not just a story <laughs> for hitchhiking. I wasn't doubting. <laughs> <laughs> but in interestingly, um, having kids, I feel like made my um, my art time a lot more focused and productive. Because I can remember before it would be like, oh, I'm going to draw and be like looking up. Oh, what, what, what am I, what's going to inspire me today? And then after, you know, falling down the Facebook rabbit hole of um, news feeds and whatever random things and it was like oh yeah that's right an hour later it's like I wanted to draw something 
and uh, and now it's like okay i've got some time and then whoosh, um it really helped me to focus on using that time more effectively i would imagine you have to have a plan you got kids involved yeah yeah Do you think this is his real hair, or do you think there's? Do you think it's glued on, or is it like extensions? What What do you? Think? I'm assuming that that's glued on because he he rarely had his own hair going. <laughs> yeah. In most photos, he's fairly hairless, right? It's so yeah. yeah. I think it was kind of stuck to the side of. It. Side pony. It looks yeah. so real. That's pretty cool style. Some nice uh, jewelry. I mean, only the best for Ramses. Yeah. His lips are so <laughs> luscious. It's got the pretty, pretty lips. See? Whoever asks. I never knew how yeah. pretty he was before. Got good features. You don't get to be a pharaoh with when you're ugly. <laughs> uh, I. That's true. <laughs> I've actually got a tab open in my browser because I I looked him up and I've got the mummy of Ramses the second. Um, pretty. I saw really, that in real life. It's a pretty amazing. Um, Is it like your burner? <laughs> no. Has... I heard later that uh, it, I didn't really see him in real life. Uh... It was a fake that they, but they like towed it around. I saw it in Jacksonville in, in 1986 or 1987. And I don't know if I saw the real Ramses a second, but I know I got to sit next to John Winterton <laughs> on the bus. Cool. Then I threw up because uh. I got car sick. <laughs> that didn't leave a good impression. On the bus? And that's my. Bus sick. It wasn't embarrassing. It was like, yeah. Uh, it was John Winterton. Maybe he's remembering this moment simultaneously. He let me drink out of his Pepsi can and look at his um, portable television. Wow. The Sony Watchman. <laughs> I was equal. Cool. Might have been connected, honestly. So it could have been whatever was in his Pepsi can. <laughs> it was the smell of the bus. To be honest, that bus smelled like cigarettes and like these old corduroy pants. Oh, that was a terrible. I think that's what Jackson Carter bus. Just smelled. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Definitely. Sorry, Jackson. <laughs> But just smelling like cigarettes and corduroys. <laughs> Sounds about right. <laughs> Jacksonville in the eighties. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, the Florida slander. Sorry, uh, didn't handle it. Shannon, you are blazing through all this. Yeah. This is unprecedented drawing for me on Dawn Together. I never draw. This That's thing. looking amazing. But also, it's we're going pretty long. Yeah, I'm procrastinating pretty hard right now. Gotta be honest. I draw better when I have to saw open the wall. Oh, Sh Sh Charlotte said, um, "Oh, that's why you're doing so well because there's some pressing thing that needs doing, and it's like these drawings better be good." <laughs> mm -hmm. um, yeah, Charlotte just said, uh, love you, Runa. I saw him perform live in London in The King and I. That's cool. Really cool. Yeah. Everybody loves you. <laughs> Such a neat name. Um, Guru Nadon uh, sent us some, some Italian comments. Um, yeah, we need Charlotte to translate. Well, uh, 
yeah, the, the ones that are in the chat. Um, <clears throat> so that I, I sh shared in my stories um, that John, your, your art is stunning with both a single medium and um, combining combining various media. Um, and the Google Translate said working working with media or fruit, which I liked. Um, or is ah perhaps it was like is working with different media the fruit of experiments that took place over time, or was it born already during mm -hmm. the formation in your initial studies? Um, yeah, I was I was. So I guess, but um, do you p perhaps do you see that the way you work and the, the way you you work with different media? Um, it, yeah, is it result now because you've been um, you've been at it for a few years? Um, do you feel like a lot of it has come? Is it is it like a lot of what you're doing now still informed by what what you're doing in your studies? Um, or like what, what has been the new, maybe new threads of inspiration and, uh, this may be bending the question a bit, but like f the way you work now, how much of it do you feel is like, uh, I guess it's all seeded in that uh, initial study phase, but, um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I'm trying to say. I, uh, well, I, I can I can read it. Um, okay, let's start again. <laughs> his art is starting both with a single medium, example, colored pencil. This is Google Translate from Italian and combining various media, ink, pencil, paint. The harmony in which he, he does this, he has always loved working with and media or fruit of experiments that took place over time. <laughs> or was it born already during his formation initial studies? I'll leave it at that. Did you come to love your favorite medium? How did you come to love? Uh, how did you love to paint? For, <laughs> I, th I love you too. I think the question is kind of going along with uh, did I just did I learn like just mixing medias together or I think, um, but I think in school we learned there was a class called mixed media. So you would try different things, pen and ink, oil rubs, acrylic painting, watercolor, gouache, all that stuff. Um, and you were allowed to combine those things. Most times, not very successful. <laughs> but all that stuff kind of stayed with me. So nowadays, it comes down to, that's why I draw on the, the watercolor paper. So if it's faster for me to get like a whole area of value, just put in with the wash or with gouache or acrylic, I'll do that. It's all about speed at this point for me. Mm -hmm. I'd rather get to the finish line rather than just sticking with one medium if I don't have to. So I can do like these large swashes of value and color and shape, then I can go and shore it up with color pencil. And that's kind of goes back to like, this stuff isn't precious. Mm -hmm. So why not try it out, see if it works, see what I, what I can put on top of another thing. And you just kind of move on from there. But like gouache is one thing I'm not very familiar with, but I did like an Angela Davis on a small little uh, card catalog thing, but I put a ton of layers mm -hmm. on that, which you're probably not supposed to be doing with watch. And I learned a lot from it. I know that you know every layer is super thick if you're going to keep doing that because it just reactivates whatever's under it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you can draw on top of watch, which is great. So. I think it's just not caring if you mess up or not. There is no messing up at this point, I think. Yeah. Just experimenting. Yeah. 
I was wondering, it's um, like, how do you find uh, new impulses, new ways to experiment or look at something differently? Um, like, are there, in as much as we can like articulate this kind of decision making process of the way we go about doing things, but um, do you feel like there's something you would do to kind of keep fresh or have some new input into your process um, to keep it alive for yourself and uh, yeah I, I just I look at everybody's stuff like people on Instagram Pinterest whoever um, I follow probably nothing mm -hmm. but artists sculptors fine artists abstract artist. So whatever I can steal from mm -hmm. someone else, I will put into my process or thought process. Any way of making this simpler for me, I'll do that. Yeah. Cool. And I take things from sculptors a lot, which is what I want to do moving forward with other stuff. But that's a little bit more down the road. But yeah, I just steal from other people. Mm -hmm. and see what they're doing it just makes my life easier they've done the work yeah, yeah. so i'm just gonna take what they've done and you know see if it works for me if it doesn't there's so many other processes i can like look at and, and take from other people and then just make it work for me yeah cool if people are kind enough to share i would definitely uh look into what they're doing yeah that was some um something Rebecca Gay said about um, like the, when, you, when you you kind of stealing or looking at the decisions and the way people uh, do their things that it's you're always putting it through your own filter and um, the way you you use it and you implement that inspiration in your own work um, like it, it be becomes part of what you're doing and it becomes yours and uh, th through your own creative process. And that's such a cool, I, I guess that, yeah, just having that like at, at our fingertips so much um, visual inspiration, potentially, um, you know, daily, this direct access to so much incredible work, which is being made as it's being made or even, um, like past work of people and stuff it's uh it's really definitely part of the like the the blessing of the the online um the i guess the the, the golden side of the, the social media um experience is that um direct in inspiration and connection as well to um to what people are doing. No, I mean, who's it? Nicholas Uribe. Mm -hmm. That was, that was Dylan not saying stealing. I think I said stealing once. I mean, <laughs> but yeah. Any kind of, I mean, not stealing what they're doing and copying exactly what they're doing, but trying to understand what they're thinking and what they're seeing yeah, yeah. when they're actually doing mm -hmm. these things. I don't mean actually just like, I don't want to paint, I can't paint like Soroya or Da Vinci or whoever, yeah. like it's impossible. I can't beat what they did because they are themselves, but I can take uh, some of their thought mm -hmm. process yeah. for sure. Yeah, and the things that kind of grab our attention um, or the things that we perceive and, and learn along the way that then maybe like um, I, I just I just made a video about using a blending stump and I th the first time I used one was like either last year or the year before and then I kind of it made all these drawings by <laughs> all these people make sense and I was like oh they probably had a blending stump oh okay and um and and then to like 
right, just like that that tool as like a, a point of reference to be like, oh, that that with that you can do this thing, and then and then to see how that translates potentially into oil painting and how things can be smeared and but just learning something like now and then having that that kind of frame of reference for understanding the way people have made their decisions and made their marks and stuff it's like oh okay that's how they they've done that and perhaps i could you know try that out too and um you like their edges yeah. and stuff like that Over here yeah, I can't do a stump. It's a. Uh, you know that some people they they don't like when like cardboard is scratched mm -hmm. or something like that. A stump on paper. It just I, can't, I, do it. can't do it. <laughs> yeah, like some oh, metal on metal, or um, oh, fingers on chalkboards, like that kind of thing. Yeah. Oh, I've got a thing like that. What is it? Uh, Put it out of my mind. Yeah, I got one of those. Hal wants to know what kind of what brand of watercolor paper you're on. This is Windsor Newton. Yeah, it's a watercolor block. And probably put that in the description later. Yeah. Between. Faber Castle color pencils, some really cheap color pencils, and Prisma colors. Man, this is a hard reference. I'm digging it now, though. I was like, I thought it was going to come out terrible, but I like it. Is it? Is it? All the years of style. Is it because he's just so beautiful? Yep. Ah. See? It's his pretty green mouth. <laughs> he does look out pretty good now because he's pretty green <laughs> mouth. He doesn't need any plastic surgery. From the internet plastic surgeon guy. Uh, no. And his filter is the perfect length. <laughs> it's camera ready to go. What's his secret? Genetics? <laughs> Just good as I can do. Never knew that before. Dylan, are you doing. Yours as well? Yeah, I, I am. So I can't see yours. And I, sh I shifted to pen and I couldn't I couldn't find the pen I wanted to use. And I'm kind of wondering what I'm doing. <laughs> is your yule as pretty as mine? No. Nah. Like He's got a lot, of, a lot more hard, hard marks like in his face. Time. It's looking like this at the moment. Oh, your yule is a lot more rugged for sure. Yeah. Mine is delicate. He's both. Yeah. Rather be a delicate. The, um... And I want to be ready. <laughs> just realized I want someone to say that. So... Did you you're so that? rugged and delicate. Please tell me about having both rugged and delicate. <laughs> you tell us in the chat how you would like to be described. And we will... Yes, <laughs> we should only describe people in ways that we would prefer <laughs> to be described. Dylan, Dylan and John, you are both so incredibly <laughs> rugged and So, so, uh, so, draw so drawable. <laughs> so adorable. <laughs> <laughs> He's a dad, he's a <laughs> Yeah, I've, I've, I've caught myself making some dad jokes recently. Just saying some like... Any joke yeah, you any, tell any me, joke. I like 
but particularly to the to the kids. <laughs> um, I told one today, which I thought was really good. To to Arvid, but it was in German. Um, where he was like, German. he was counting, German. and he's like, na, um, nach der nach der erste kommt der zweite, nach der zweite kommt der dritte, nach der dritte kommt der vierte. Nach der vierte kommt der fünfte, nach der fünfte kommt der sechste, nach der sechste kommt der siebte, nach der siebte kommt der achte. And then he was like, was kommt nach der achte? And I said, Bahn. And he just stared at me. And Achterbahn is a roller coaster in German. Because it's like a tr Yeah, and he just stared at me. With like almost smiled, but he was like <laughs> It was like the answer he wanted was the nointer. Um, the, the ninth comes after the eighth. Um, yeah, yes, totally. I, 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 I really, I was like, oh, that was a dad joke. Just the way he looked at me. He's like, that's not what I wanted you to tell me. <laughs> what we, so that's, oh, that's the definition of a dad joke. It's, it's the response. <laughs> Maybe. It's not, it's not the joke, it's the response. It's it's a yeah like I'm it's hungry. Un unsolicited humor hungry. in the face of a genuine <laughs> question or <laughs> need. Yeah, make me a sandwich. Poof, you're a sandwich. <laughs> yeah. Wow, we really put a point on that one. Yeah. I think. Thanks, John. <laughs> <laughs> You're here. <laughs> How come there's no mom jokes? Good question. I feel left out. Good mom joke bag is the bad guy. <laughs> Maybe maybe mum jokes are actually jokes. actually funny. Oh yeah, that's it. It's because moms are the 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 object of the joke, not the or the subject of the joke, not the. No, we're the object of the joke. No, that's confusing. Oh, what did Austin tell me? <laughs> I think mom's gonna pass. <laughs> Moms do get a pat. But my son sent me a a meme and it said, I heard your mama went skydiving and there was a hole in the clouds, like the size of a shopping mall. A, a big like hole. A, it was over, well, it was like, it was a big hole in the clouds mm. and it said, I heard your mama went skydiving. So it was an, uh... And I said, I've never been skydiving before. <laughs> so that was... Your mama jokes are different. <laughs> Your mom is so pretty. Yeah, uh, um, she's just really pretty. Well. <laughs> there. That's a good your mom and joke. That's a good one. Run and tell it. <laughs> <laughs> Spread it to the winds. <laughs> we all have ears to hear. Let them hear. Getting there. Uh, it looks um a bit low res from here, but amazing. Of course. Looking. You can hold it up. Oh my god. <laughs> cool. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, sorry, oh, my setup is not so <laughs> I apologize. It's okay. No problem. My setup would be moldy drywall in here, that's for sure. But y'all don't have smell of it in, so you can't tell. But I've given away my secret, and that's it. Practically, game. 
Do you have to take care of your wall problem by yourself? Yes. I have to. <laughs> I'm compelled with compulsions to have to. Uh, do you have some good YouTube videos that are helping? Oh, it's not rocket science, Dylan. <laughs> 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 this ain't my first rodeo. <laughs> I I'll watch rodeo videos. It's like reading the instructions. I don't have to read the instructions. That would be so much less fun. Um learn Chacow first. Uh, would there be rodeos at county fairs? Just thinking about the, the Earth's World experience. Um, What's, um, <clears throat> what are these people be experiencing as they're being, uh, they're experiencing the United States? They're experiencing four or eight shows and Traveling merry-go-round. I mean, Ferris wheel uh -huh. operators from Cumberland Farms, who are very scary sometimes. Carnies. 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 Doing their carny thing, trying to guess your weight as you walk by, and then um, insulting you if you don't <laughs> give them three dollars or whatever to throw a ball at them, so they fall in the water. So it's some um, fried, fried food. food. A lot of music. Lo loud music, yeah. radios. Oh yeah, you get the. Uh, do you have rodeos in New York? You got New York rodeos. Maybe upstate. <laughs> not, not so much in the not, city. Not like in that Dolly Parton movie with Sylvester Stallone in it. What's that? Uh, what's that movie called? I just watched it. New or old? It's old. That's like 1979, 1980. He was a rhinestone. What is it? Rhinestone. It's like this country singing club in New York. And Dolly Parton has like a contract with the owner and he won't let her out of the contract. But she said, I can make a country singer out of anybody. Out of anybody. And so she goes out and yoinks a cab driver out of a cab, a New York cab, and then it's Sylvester Stallone. And then he has to become a country singer by the end of the movie. And I think they fall in love. But I didn't get that far. Are you telling me there's a movie with. Sylvester Stallone is singing country music, where he's that learning exactly from Dolly Parton. Mm -hmm. In a club, a New York City club, with a mechanical bull. <laughs> I will have to search for that. <laughs> I think you have to. That sure. could be some. That could be some that good reference true. for for. That, that intriguing feeling you have right now. <laughs> let it bloom within you. Let it blossom and grow. I mean, I have, I have so many questions. And like, what does it sound like? And but I'll, I'll, I'll look through. You, you may leave with more <laughs> questions. I hope. <laughs> Bring those questions to me when you're done. Maybe we can sort this out. Yeah. Because you're starting to get this path, so yeah. Yeah, and um, if you don't know what to be for Halloween, um, you can be Sylvester Stallone, and I'll be Dolly Parton, <laughs> and then I'll teach you how to be a country singer in the country music club, and we'll get that evil country singing club owner in the end, and really show him what, what for. It sounds like there'll be good some. I need to see the music first. <laughs> There'll be some good reference photos of you. I can draw you. 
<laughs> draw you together, <laughs> Sylvester <laughs> and Tali. <laughs> she is so fancy, though. Even to this day, she's a. Uh, um, what would you call her? Country royalty. Country royalty. A national treasure. Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. Telling everyone her breasts are natural, but if they weren't natural, she would probably get them made bigger. Did she say that? Yeah. <laughs> she said, you know, they're natural, but you know, if I didn't have, I'm very blessed, but if I wasn't, I would probably make them, I would go out and get uh -huh. breasts. Oh. It's amazing. Anyway, it's <laughs> Um, are we going to post these drawings? Thank you for changing yeah. the subject, Paul. <laughs> yes, please. Please do post. <clears throat> yes. Um, yeah. We want to yeah, we'll post. My, uh, see everyone's drawings. Obviously, my feet are slow. And all that. This, is the, this is the drawing together that has gone at my personal drawings. Today. Yeah, this is, this is the longest. We have a light in common. Oh, is it? Did we beat Cammy? Have, has yeah, Camilo's... Yeah, I think that we were, we were 2, 243 with Camilo. And now... We are smashing. Smashing. Like that is awesome. It's a f oh, I was going to say it's the first time we've done four portraits, but it's not. Because we did four portraits of Charlotte. Charlotte. Um, but yeah. Yeah, some, some like of them. That. Some of them took one minute. <laughs> were they ink? I'm not being peer pressured. Were they ink? What's that? They were. They were real warm up. Warm ups, like blind contour drawing, um, upside down drawing. That's kind of free your mind. Oh yeah, why did why did get ready to draw? John and I are on the same wavelength. We're like kicking our own ass to try <laughs> properly. I can I'm trying. I'm, I'm very excited to see. Forget this forgiving stuff. This lady, she's not going to make <laughs> this guy. No, she has to. He's, he might be at a stopping point. Don't let her down. Oh, she can sit there. It's fine. Ah. Patient demeanor. Yeah, I mean, this stuff just takes as long as it takes. Yeah. Oh, no, I love to hear. Are you, are you in the middle of a hundred heads thing at the moment, or is it resting? Or no way. <laughs> um, painting and messing with. Ink and gouache and that. Finishing up big cool. paintings. Mostly right now. Awesome. But yeah, hundred heads, I don't I don't know if I'm I like your mm -hmm. thirty day is a little bit yeah. more mad. I think I learned a lot from doing it a couple of times, but Yeah. It's a lot. It's it's a huge commitment. I I did um earlier this year well actually what was it yeah in december and then again in february i did um a month of 10 minute portraits um and that was cool that was just brief it's doable because with those um with those long ones even if it's um like an hour a day like finding the time and finding the kind of the 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 wind in your sails the breeze of inspiration to like, yeah. Some some days it's it goes it just works really well. So you were, you were doing it together with a friend. Were you you like both just choosing inspiration and you'd both use the same reference or how were you doing that? No, uh, we were allowed to whatever. just use okay. whatever we wanted. Just, just getting the head yeah. done, basically. That was uh, a yeah. that was enough. <laughs> Yeah, because I'm very indecisive when it comes 
to picking reference. So okay. that alone took a while. Yeah. And where had you you both heard of the the hundred heads idea? I found it on Instagram. Cool. I think it was Instagram. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that'd be very interesting to do. I think we did the first one during, no, actually it was before the pandemic. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it was something I wanted to try out with the, the things I was drawing. Yeah. And I needed to do something. So I figured boot camp was the... Uh, yes. What's that artist boot camp about? Speaking of boot camp. There's an artist boot camp. I think you need to advertise. Is, is that? Yeah. I don't know. I, I kind of scroll past a lot of stuff. Yeah, there's, there's a lot oh, that's... The ads. There's a lot that's worth scrolling past. But maybe the boot camp would be, yeah, would like, be just the thing. Maybe, like, um, I don't have a lot of stuff holding me accountable for stuff. I talked to a personal trainer this morning. Oh, yeah. And I've never had one or thought about getting one. Well, besides Tolene, my son. Mm -hmm. um, but, like, he's like a yoga teacher, a personal trainer, and maybe I'll get hands to impress. Oh, cool. At some point. But it was really exciting talking to somebody, and he... Uh, we were talking about marketing and things that you scroll past, mm -hmm. and it was really inspiring. And uh, this is really tight conversation in my head. Because how do you make stuff that people won't scroll past? Like, there's everything so uh, scroll pastable. <laughs> I'm really scroll pastable. Like, my, my Instagram is just like talk about stagnant like I don't participate in anything I'm not I'm not trying hard enough I'm all over the place with like not focused I followed too many different kinds of accounts kind of... so your algorithm is all messed up <laughs> I think so I guess I see change it's a nightmare this dude yeah how do you how do you guys do that I bet there's a lot of interest in not just for me but on how you because Dylan's about to hit 19,000 and you're up there too John I've forgotten how many followers you've got it's a fair few yeah it stayed around the same just because the um ever since the algorithm train changed you just don't reach the same mm -hmm. people anymore or you don't get to like kind of reach a widespread um you put like conscious thought into that, both of you? Not so much, to be honest. I think um, I I have the community building stuff that I've been doing to thank for my Instagram growth, like hosting drawing sessions and um, and I also th there was a phase where it was like. I remember in the early days of using Instagram, I was like being afraid of posting too much or, um, or feeling really insecure about my work and showing it and and then realizing if I, I was organizing events and then I can show the work of everyone who's participated and that was more like a, um, that was like a fun way, you know, to, to share and also be um, engaged to, to learn from each other, doing stuff together. And then um, that's a, I, I think it's a super fun part of doing this. It's like seeing what everyone's done. And um, so I think that that social and community aspect of, of what I've been doing the past few years has um, been, been key to it. Yeah, it's yeah. more of a community thing, yeah. which is good. That's uh, that was like the whole thesis of my little art bio like, written. Oh, I need to write one as well. It was like, uh, 
how you do. Yeah. Can I copy? <laughs> Can I copy yours? <laughs> Pass me your art bio. <laughs> Real daunting. You're so hard. Are you doing it for uh, um, uh, Mike's podcast? Oh, I don't know if I need to do that for Mike's. But um, that there's uh, there's going to be a, a Kenya show in Gibraltar, and I will have three drawings in it. Yeah. Congrats. Thank you. Yeah, it's it's really cool. I, I wish I was going there, but I'm I'm not. Um, but that will be early September. So anyone who's going to Gibraltar <laughs> or lives in southern Spain or just has the the means and desire <laughs> to go to Gibraltar, go for it. Carl Olga has um, instigated it. It's pretty cool. It was really great. Uh, I. Is um, it a theme did you know the it's it's like mostly it, it's not a theme but everyone doing it is like a figurative painter it's, uh, or or drawer um and there everyone participating is um kind of part of the Kano community are you familiar with that um, part of it is a reference sharing um, group chat where people will upload selfies and draw each other, paint each other, and and there's a, a bunch of people in within that community that have also done like a hundred head challenges. And um, I heard from <clears throat> one of the the people who was one of the like initial four members of the Kenyo community. I um, Sepe de Meira, that um, it kind of started with four people doing the 100 head challenge together and it turned into this um, online art cult, some people <laughs> refer to it as. There's this just kind of really chaotic, chaotic reference sharing group chat. Um, and yeah, it's uh, there was a show in Antwerp in Belgium in May and I went just to to see because it was fairly reachable from where I live and um, it was so cool after years of um, seeing these people's work on on my phone it would be pretty cool to meet some people and um, and go and see their work in the flesh so um, I went there and then <laughs> yeah it was funny seeing people in like three dimensional in in meat space, like they're all so big. <laughs> After so much time experiencing people through the phone. And their account names, yeah, yeah. And not the real names. It's like, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think. I'm not going to play this turd anymore. Cool. Only shiny turds are right. allowed. We'll hit end stream there. That's a perfect ending. <laughs> I want to do that. <laughs> um, put that in there. <laughs> um, I always want to draw more Kenya. It's if you draw if you're if you draw from Kenya. Does that make you? A yeah. Or do you have to get like? Uh, the, well, actually? there's no there's no rules really. I think it's um. Well, there there are actually. Um, you need to get permission to share the reference photo. If you, if you work from someone's photo, you you don't. That doesn't mean you have the permission to share their photo. Um, but if if you ask, then maybe they say yeah, okay. <laughs> but um, and it's all. Uh, in the the reference sharing chat, there's no nudity. But if if people want to direct message each other, um, naked selfies, then uh, then I guess they can. But in in the group chat, it's. <laughs> that explains something. Um, I think that's the only rule, really. But I think yeah, just by just by being there, drawing from the, drawing from the reference, sharing reference, that's um, that makes you part of it. 
Alright, look how shiny my dirt is. Super shiny. Graphite shiny. Cool. Right. Shiny. Is is anyone still here wow. in the chat? Let us know. <laughs> um that you've you've made it to the end with us. Yeah, wow, there, 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 there's still some people here. <laughs> John is here. <laughs> John's here. Cool. Um <laughs> Thank you, John. It's it's been totally chilled and cool just hanging yeah. out and drawing with you. Um. Oh, uh -huh. the sound is gone again. Wait a minute. John, John. We're back to the sound old double muted. double muted scenario. Um, How about cool. Now? Yeah, yeah. Now we can hear you. Yeah. Oh, I was saying thank you, you guys. This is a uh, very cool, very nice chill. Stressful at the beginning, trying to get my <laughs> very patient and nice. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank, thank you. And I'll post oh, this because awesome. it's very pixelated. And <laughs> and from the live feed, I just don't. I don't yes, know why. I rely on my my me on. I'm on. That's what I'm trying to say. Hmm, I'll just talk normally. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys. Cool. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> And, um, Thank you both. Thank yeah, you. look forward to seeing everyone's work. And uh, Thank you, everybody. And yeah. Oh, Kathy made it to the end. Van made it to the end. Pal's still here. John's still here. Guru. I thought that was an old comment, though. Okay. All right. Okay. Cool. Love watching now. People are jumping ship. Cool. Have fun with your large paintings, John. And um, look forward to, to seeing everything that you post. <gasps> look at that. Oh, my God. You just you just guys. came into clarity. Okay. Okay, <laughs> cool. Thanks so much. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Bye bye. Yeah, thanks, guys.